to be in the back of the net. Yes! Gunner, it is a Get brilliant it. goal. Ball goes down and the referee says that is a penalty. Oh, and he's missing, it's hit the post. Straight in the net. Well, it's gone straight into the goal. Ball goes across field and into the back of the net. And it's an equaliser for the Navy. Pushed onto the bar and he's in. Come on! Shoots, sends the keeper the wrong way. Hello and a warm welcome from Aldershot Town for the second of this week's Inter Services football fixtures. Now, if you joined us last night, you would have seen defending champions, the RAF women, beat the Army 2-0. Well, tonight it's the turn of the men. And the same as in the women's competition, the Royal Air Force are the defending title holders. Let's remind ourselves of how they won their crown last year. Oh, the cross comes over. Oh, spilled by Pilot Brig. And the referee has said penalty. penalty. Big moment. Big moment in this inter services. And it's saved. Oh, has That's it gone in? No, it's big. gone in. That's a lovely ball through. Oh, and it's going oh. to be an equaliser. Surely it is an equaliser. And would you believe it's Brody Gray who's got on the end of it? Ball goes forward, oh, chance for the army, and it's going to be in the back of the net. Thompson then against McCormick. Shoots, sends the keeper the wrong way. Oh, and it's a chance for a, a third for the army, and he's not going to miss that, is he? Scott McCarthy. That's a great shot, and oh, he's in the back of the net. Goal. Well, what a cracker. What an absolute corker. Goes wide, and into goal. the back of the net. It's a brilliant header from Scott Hind. All over the pitch at the moment, gets the cross in. It's a beautiful one. Free header, header. that's a goal! In the net, and who is the Sam scorer? Rawlings. But Sam Rawlings, the captain.
Well, inter-services football is always a tight tussle, and in a moment we shall hear how the army have been preparing for tonight's fixture. But first up, Carl Dixon has been chatting to the RAF. <laughs> Great training camp. Um, we're looking sharp. The boys are boys are up for it, and you know we don't disrespect the the, the competition, uh, or, we, or we don't devalue the competition any less than than previous years. You know, it, you know, if I'm being brutally honest, it, it adds a little bit more of a. Um, a, a sort of incentive to try and win a treble because that sounds better than a double um, but I'm sure the Army and the Navy are going to do their utmost to uh, to spoil our fun for us. I mean the year before I scored a hat trick at older shots so I'm hoping for the same again this year um, but last under services no I didn't score um, came off in the, with an injury against the Navy um, and then obviously I missed quite a few chances in the Army game should have really uh, put a couple away and made it a little bit easier for the team so yeah I'm desperate to, to get on the score sheet in both games or at least one game trying to help the team um, ultimately that's that's why I'm in the team um, as a striker so yeah I really want to go this year. Biggest sort of uh, event of the season for us. Um, we had a, a, a long season already uh, in, in terms of uh, contact time. We had three weeks in Australia, um, which was a great uh, pre-season actually for us, where we had everyone in one place for almost three weeks, and again another three weeks together of inter-service football. Uh, looking forward to facing a strong uh, RAF and Royal Navy team. Yeah, your old nemesis, the Royal Air Force, out first. You know, what are you expecting from the Light Blues this year? Ball through, looking for Campbell. Pilot. Yeah, Campbell chasing it. Comes back, and that's a great shot. And oh, it's in the back of the net. Goal. Well, what a cracker! Well, that's going to be a tough start, isn't it? Uh, we're, you know, first first day back in this uh, inter-service um, sort of pre-camp. We reviewed the game. We watched it back. Um, it was the second time I'd been able to watch it back, and uh, yeah. You managing to sort of pick out their strengths, uh, of which they've got a lot of. So it's going to be a, a, a tough game for us next Wednesday evening. Really good time of year to sort of play football, um, and it's, it's, it's an honour and privilege to play on, on such great surfaces. And to test yourselves against the other two. Which one of those rivals then do you fear the most, or, or is it, you know, would we'll take who comes on the day? Uh, just take who comes on the day, to be honest. I don't think there's one team for us. I think obviously it's two big games, and we have to focus on, on both of them respectively. Well, kickoff is almost upon us. The players will be coming out of the tunnel and lining up for the national anthem. What better opportunity to go and join our commentator, Kyle Dixon. Thanks, Jules. Welcome back to what we'll call part two of this Army v RAF battle. Last night in the Women's Championship, the reigning champions from the RAF, well, they, they faced a tough fight from the challengers from the Army, but managed to walk away with a 2-0 win. Tonight in the Men's Championship, the reigning champions from the RAF face a tough fight from the British Army. Will we see deja vu? It's a world we're about to find out. The officials and the teams are just heading out, so let me quickly introduce co-commentator for this evening. We've got Football League referee, Royal Navy referee, Scott Jackson. Um, and you were there 12 months ago in Shrewsbury for this fixture. Real tight, cagey affair. Do you think it'll be the same? Yeah, um, absolutely agree with you, Kyle. And uh, the weather was... Definitely a lot worse than it is tonight. It's a really fine evening down here in Aldershot. You know, the stage is set, the pitch is looking great, and uh, hopefully we'll get a fantastic spectacle of uh, forces football. Well, as the uh, teams are lined up, I think we're getting dignitaries coming out and shaking hands. So let's take a quick look at the two teams while we can, starting with the home side, the British Army. And the Army have got a point to prove here, but... A bit of a surprise for us in the, in the in the commentary desk. We see Owen James on the bench for the army, starting for UCAS in the Kentish Cup, but he's not found his way into the starting lineup today. Uh, it'll be the centre midfield partnership, you would think, of Matty Evans and Sean Thompson, experienced UCAS players who will, they hope lead them to victory. 
special shout out as well for Andrew Matthews, who might just be the tallest man in the whole stadium. So <laughs> let's see how he does on corners. Uh, moving on to the RAF, and the reigning champions have got a system and a squad that has worked for the past two years, and they're sticking with it. Why change what isn't broken? Of course, Jake Goslin is the player that stands out for some, the most talented footballer in the UK Armed Forces right now. You expect him to have a big, big part tonight. Michael Campbell, the skipper, scored a hat-trick two years ago on this stadium, in this stadium against the Army. Didn't score last year, and he told me on Monday he's desperate to score. So <laughs> keep an eye on that one. Two very talented teams, though, Scott. Yeah, absolutely agreed. You know, we spoke about the Army team. There's not many names that <clears throat> jump off the page from years and years gone by where the RAF have been a solid unit for, for some time. Um, you know, the names we mentioned, Jake Goslin. Let's uh, just take a pause for the national yes, anthem. Please be upstanding for the national anthem. impeccably done as always and uh, this should be a big big night someone's pointed out on facebook already by the way i said part two it's actually part three the masters played this afternoon let's give them their credit the raf uh, veterans won 2-1 at alton so two wins for the raf out of the two games let's see if they can uh, do it in the senior men's setup too but the army will try and stop them and this is a different army at aldershot like i say you saw the game at shrewsbury is yeah. it a different, like they won 3 0 against the Navy here at Aldershot last year? Yeah, it's but a I different think it, beat. it's the new names we talk about, Cal. You know, they're quite unknown to us. Uh, we're surprised with the starting lineup. You know, the ones that jump off the page Luke Carney, Greg Peel. And I, I was chatting to Luke earlier, actually, uh, on the pitch, um, trying to get where he's at. You know, because obviously he's seen it for 14 years now. Um, and he was just saying, you know, we've got to keep Jake Gosling quiet. Don't give him a sniff early doors because if you if you let Jake go and you know give him the confidence, he, he'll take it, cap, capitalise on it. And the the RAF have a couple of players that have got these the ball playing abilities. I mean, you may, we mentioned Jake Gosling, obviously he stands out, but other players such as they've got Jack Debenham back, who's a really talented ball player. And he had a great game at Shrewsbury at the, the end of last year. They've also got Aaron Ayer who scored at Shrewsbury mm. last year, so he is another man who could stand out. I will give the Army some credit though. Let's talk about how they go into these games. The Army had a actually pretty impressive 2023 when you look past the inter-services. They were invited over to Australia as part of this uh, Australian Defence Force Championship. They played the Australian uh, Air Force, Army, Navy, and they won the whole tournament. So they do come in with some inter-services success, just not quite the British inter-services success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for the RAF, they've had a decent pre-season too. Uh, played nine, won five of those. Only one defeat. Uh, I was there with my camera actually for that one, so I can tell you that it was a defeat to Hartbury University. And actually, what I noticed from that, the defeat came from a very poor start from the RAF. They conceded early and they couldn't quite get into the game. So it'll be interesting if we see that tonight or whether they've ironed out some of those creases. Um, but it, look, inter services, it's all about what, who turns up on the night. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Helen Richardson's uh, saying hello on Facebook, and of course, she is watching because. She watches every Minchie Fulton. It, it is she a wouldn't job miss it for the world. It is a job. Um, see you next week. Yes, you will see uh, John and co next week. Um, and she has pointed out that tickets for Fratton Park next week for the Army-Navy game are available, so I will mention it. Um, here we go. This should be a big, big game in terms of the Army's progression because, like you say, we know what the RAF are going to do. Yeah. They're after a treble, which is pretty historic mm -hmm. but the army know about that history let's talk about before covid the fact that the army won four years on the back yeah very dominant as well that, that they period, were yeah. the dominant force and covid19 we had a large break as did all military sports and come back and the raf have just blitzed everyone away so mm. let's see what happens in 2024 mm. this army team then 
I mean, we've mentioned you've mentioned Greg Peel, and I will mention Greg Peel is a very, very tall man as well. Yeah. So they do have the height. They've they got are. the height. The set pieces might be uh, might be the telling factor. We look at the uh, the Air Force lined up. They're not overly tall. Do you know they'll be technical? They'll try and get it down. They'll play. They'll play in short spaces in pockets. Do you know to try and get progressively? I think where the army might go a bit more direct. I will mention we were meant to have uh, Steve Johnson the. Uh, Chief Executive of Navy Football with us. Not quite sure where he is. So you're, so you're stuck with us, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, and we're underway. The RAF gets us underway then. And uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly how they're like. That's a really good early ball from Gosling, by the way. Campbell was nearly in straight away. Good start from the RAF. He'll have an early corner. I mentioned about the RAF not starting well in pre-season. That is what they needed <laughs> to see. Jake Gosling, of course. And they look short as well. Exactly, they do look short. Whipped into the box, cleared away by Callum Cox, making his debut in the inter-services for the Army. That's more up than away from Ayat. Bit of a push, but referee says play on. And the Army just can't quite get on the ball at the moment. Bit of, bit of a scattered start from the men in red. I think we always see this in the first games of the inter-services, Cal, you know, over the last few years, where you know it takes them a, t a while just to settle down, you know, get their nerves out the system, and uh, you know, start playing this, the stuff they play. Well, they will look to their experienced players. You mentioned Luke Kearney, 14 years experience in the army setup. That that can't be replaced. That is just incredible from him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, Luke's experienced in civilian football. He still plays week in, week out. You know, in non-league. So he's always playing. You know, he's always active. He's always kind of game fit, game sharp. I'm told he's a decent striker too. So. We'll, we'll see if the army need him later in the game. That, that's what he told us. Phil Bright then to take this throw in. Interesting Phil Bright, by the way. Uh, left back, usually. Starting yeah. a right back. I noticed this when I went and saw them train the other day, the RAF, that he was playing in the right back position. So we'll see how he gets on on his weaker side. We know he can play there, but still. Here's Gosling. Already starting to get control of the ball, which is not what Jimmy Blair will want to see. Good play. To keep hold of the ball and... We talk about leaders, we talk about this RAF leadership group they've got. We're talking Phil Bright, we're talking Sam Rawlins, Joe Thomas at the back, Gosley and Campbell. Players who are experienced at this level and, it, as we say, can't be replaced. I don't think Luke will want too many of them played back to him. No, God, no. Good ball towards Campbell. And it'll be a army throw. So while we have a second, let's talk about the officials. Because I mm. believe you, you've, you've done your homework as, 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 a, as a Navy official yourself. Who have we got in the middle? Yeah, so we've got Dave expect? Morey in the middle, uh, Al Gower and Gareth Jones as uh, assistants tonight, and then Lee Dubman as fourth official, I think, doing his uh, 980th uh, inter-service uh, appointment tonight. Well, he, he knows these big profile appointments then. Here's Goslin, already starting to get on the ball, which is, again, not what the army will want. Spinning, turning. We'll go all the way back I, to... I think them rumours in the car park of Jake Gosling not being fit to play tonight were all uh, a bit fictitious, Kyle. Yeah, well, when I went to training on, on Monday, I was told he had a knock and he wasn't quite sure if he was going to play. He did sit out some of the training, but clearly they were saving him for the big occasion. Uh, we'll have more on Jake Gosling, by the way, over the next few weeks. Um, we're working on a feature at the moment on him, so keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> A little plug there for you. There you go, yeah. The RAF has started, settled very quickly, mm. which, I mean, shouldn't be a surprise with the confidence they must have over the last few years. That's a good win in the midfield, though, from Thompson, as you do. As you'd see. Smart play. Clay Bryant taking on two or three men. It's a good ball down the line, actually, as well. I mean, Peel wasn't on the same wavelength. This army side then are looking to not just make a statement, but probably look for revenge as well, because nobody likes being beaten for one on your own pass. That's a late tackle. That that's enraged a few. That was a let's late, let's say late. Let's say late and, and and bit and be nice about it. Phil Bright was on the end of it. I think it was uh, that's, uh, Sean, Thompson Sean Thompson and Thompson. his uh, ferocious challenge. First challenge. See what Dave, how Dave decides to deal with it. I think it's going to be a yellow card. It's a very early yellow card, that. Can't blame the... That, I mean, that's a, it is a yellow card. There's no debate in it. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of getting to them early, but mm. let them know you're there. Phil Bright certainly knows that Sean Thompson's there. Yeah. 
Uh, support there and coming in on, on YouTube and Facebook. Make sure you guys are getting involved. Tell I think us Phil Bright reluctantly uh, shakes hands with uh, Sean Thompson there after that. Well, they are UCAF teammates, so I'm sure they'll... Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll... <laughs> there was nothing teammatey about no, that. No. no. It'll be Bright over it then on the free kick. Something for Campbell to chase. Bright has to deal with it and does. Good communication from uh, Kenny and Golbo, by the way. Here's the RF going forward with Spalding. We know he likes a goal. Spalding into the penalty area. Really good sliding tackle that from Craig Stevenson. The Army are more than willing to get physical tonight. We can see that. Maybe that's part of Jimmy's uh, pre-match. You know, he's the, the first one. I think, you know, technically they're going to be, I'd say, concerned about the RF. They know what they possess. They know what they've got in the armory. So, you know, for the army to, to come out on the front foot, you know, slightly aggressive. Goslin finding Spalding. Spalding's ball in towards Campbell. It's not going to beat uh, Stevenson in the air there. Uh, sorry, Andrew Matthews. And now maybe the army can try and get their first attack of the game going. Here's Peel looking to spin. Not against Sam Rawlins, who did have a handful of the shirt, but will play on. And that's another late challenge for Bryant. It looked like referee says play on. Campbell is still on the floor, very frustrated by it, but we do move, we do play on. Is Joe Thomas, the Welshman. Oh, he's oh, caught he's out in position. It's one on one. Really big mistake. And the Army take the lead. It's Jamie Turner, the former Manchester United youth player, who takes full advantage. I mentioned leadership group. That is not what Joe Thomas needs to be doing there. That's come against the runner play. You know, the RAF settle well. And then they get caught out with a, you know, a mistake from Joe at the bike. And Joe Thomas, one of the most experienced players the RAF have got, usually mm. calm and cool and, I mean, a little bit too cool, potentially. You can't be giving the army an opportunity like that. And just like that, the champions are behind. The whole thing's turned on its head. And it's 1-0 to the British army. Seven minutes gone. Wow. We didn't expect that. No, I mean, that, that has come as a surprise. And completely against the run of play. But hey, we are where we are. It's 1-0 and we go again. It's a really tidy finish as well from uh, Jamie Turner, by the way, because in that position one-on-one, -on -one, we saw it yesterday, the women's with Libby Dixon in the same position and she couldn't finish. Jamie Turner did. And now the Army have a one-goal lead. Here's Thomas again. The RAF have... Got to try and settle, but the army will want them rattled. They'll do everything they can to get them rattled. Turner lays it off, and Thompson searches towards the right wing. Good play from the army. Strong tackle, but he's got away. Referee has, well, said it's actually a, going to be an RAF free kick there. Foul by Lewis Simmons. I mean, we're a fair way away from it, but... Simmons... Is, is very surprised to be f not just given a free kick against him, but he did kick the ball away afterwards as well, so he's had yeah, a booking for also that. Also, yellow card for Lewis Simmons in the middle of that yeah. as well. So, a chance actually with a free kick there, and it's all had to be a booking, etc. Chance for the RAF to settle a little bit because that will have that will have shell shocked them to give away a goal like that. Yeah, and now the army. We've got something to work with. Long ball forward towards Peel. Strong challenge from Rawlins. Sam Rawlins, who scored the winner for the RAF in this fixture last year, the title winning goal. More known for his defending than his, than his goal scoring. Smart play again from Jamie Turner, and the army can recycle. Good long ball out towards the left-hand yeah, side. There right, cuts it out really well there. Matthews showing he's not just a tall man; he's a ball-playing defender as well. Army then with a throw in on the left-hand side. It's in towards Turner, who's 
the man who's starting to make things tick for the men in red. Turner, back heels, cut out, and cleared up towards Gosling, but it's not going to get there, and the army keep coming back. Good win by Bright, but again, maybe a little bit of uh, revenge there. Peel, Bryant. That's a good spin. And he'll take the shot. Blocked away, and the RAF quickly on to any potential block. And here comes the scrappiness that we mm. thought might happen. It suits the army, though, to me. That's, that suits them in their game at the moment. Yeah, and I think, you know, as they've gone 1-0 up now, you know, they'll, they'll try and settle into it. They pressed up a little bit higher. They pushed up. They look, a little, you know, two banks of four. They've gone 4-4-2 four, four, by the looks of it. Well, I mean, we talked beforehand that the RAF would be more of the uh, get, get the ball down, play in the triangles. We haven't seen that in the first 10 minutes or so here. They've gone long more than anything, which is a bit of a surprise, and the army have taken full advantage and lead by a goal to nil. If you've joined us late, a really well-taken finish mm. from Jamie Turner. Talk about the mistake, but he's still got to finish it. Still nice and composed, wasn't he, you know, as it broke one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper? Thompson looking to find a way through, but he's cut out. I really challenging and bustling away, and he does well, actually. He might just force a chance for Jake Gosling, and that looked like a late tackle, too. Referee says, play on. Gosling pounding the ground in frustration. Credit to the referee if he's got that uh, decision bang on, because that could have been a flashpoint. If he missed times that there, I think he's walking. Early yep. does. Debnam, good spin from Debnam. Campbell's on the floor again, but it was cut out. And now wide from Jamie Turner. Simmons looking for a 1 2. Would he collect it up? Ayat says absolutely not. And now Gosling, and that's a bit of space that the RAF won't want him to have. Good ball through. And Joe Spaulding with a big chance. He's, he's nearly tripped, but Joe Spaulding. Oh. And we talked about composure. The Army had here a one, and the RAF do not at the other. Do you reckon that trip just just put him off? Yeah, I think he's just put him off. Do you know, he's... I don't think there was any contact between the players. It was something on the ground or something. He's tripped over his own feet, and as he's gone through, he's just put him a step behind and, you know, maybe knocked his composure off in his body position as he as he looks to strike it past Kearney. Well, Spalding knows his way to a goal. I mean, just ask the Irish defence forces. They, they certainly saw what Joe Spalding could do last year, as did uh, in the remembrance fixture. Yaxley played the RAF, lost 5-1, and Spalding got a hat-trick. So... Spalding certainly knows his way to the back of the net, but not there. And the army, that's a let off because for the first time in the game since maybe the first sort of minute, Jake Gosling had space in the middle of the field, and that is not what Jimmy Blair's team needs. You give a player like Jake Gosling space, he will find the pass. He's got the runners. Um, we haven't spoken about this RAF setup, but what's really interesting to me is you see two wide forwards. Yeah. Really. They're still playing a diamond mm -hmm. in the middle, but the two wide forwards of Spalding and Campbell yep. are the runners for Gosling's passes. Free kick, long look in for the big man from the back. Good header down as well. Thompson might be able to collect here, giving away to Campbell. I think Andy Matthews could cause some real problems from set pieces up there. You know, if you look at the, the Aria back line and it's not massively tall. So I think if they hit Matthews and play off him, you know, they, could, they could cause some problems. To be honest with you, the size of Andy Matthews, even if they were tall, they wouldn't be <laughs> tall enough. There's a spin from Thompson. Sorry, Matty Evans, it was looking for the, the pass through. The RAF might be able to recycle here with Spalding. All the way back to Sam Dawson. Starts at left back today. Now Brody Gray, who scored at Fratton Park last year, Brody Gray. Uns unsurprised, uh, surprisingly got on the score sheet even. Gosling nearly lost it, but keeps hold of it and plays the one two. Where they've got one over and they'll struggle. This is Phil Bright, the right back, the left-footed right back, I will say. We see that immediately as he comes inside. And now Ayat, who does have an eye for a pass as well, I'm told. The RAF settling down now. Rawlins and Thomas, this centre-back partnership that's done so well over the last few years, breached already tonight. Rawlins again, wide for Bright. And I suspect we may have just settled into a pattern of play here with the Army lead in the RAF trying to cut them down. It's another poor tackle, really, from Clay Bryant. The Army have certainly 
Well, you can see a mind, mindset here, get into them for sure, really rattle the RAF, and so far it's worked, to be fair to them. It's a poor tackle from Clay Bryant, late. Wasn't really aiming for the ball, it felt like. No, I think he's right. You know, he's, he's clearly had a public word with him there just to, you know, take this thing out of it. I don't think we're in yellow card territory there. The referee's already had a couple of decisions to make. He has, he has, yeah. RAF take this short. Jake Gosling getting on the ball, left-footed inside. Took a shot, actually, and it didn't find its way through Andy Matthews. No, the referee's already had a couple of key decisions to make, and so far he's made them pretty well. I'll give him credit. Thomas looking for the one-two, won't stay in for Dawson. And it's, it's hard in these positions for the referee. You can speak for this. I'm pretty sure you've done any services games. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's such a high-pressure environment. I know you've known probably higher pressure in the Football League, etc. But this, there's just nothing quite like it. It is, and, you know, from a personal experience, this is the bigger, biggest fixture you will do in your career at this point. So, when, you know, I th speak personally, when I did it, it was the biggest appointment to date, you know, in my career. And I was nervous, you know, and whilst you... You don't want to go early for the yellow card or, you know, you, you want the game to flow. You want it to pass with minimal, um, you know, minimal fuss and just stay in the background and be the unseen person. You, you've ultimately, you're going to be challenged in it because it means everything to the forces, to the players. So, you know, it's it will, I think it is Dave's biggest fixture to date. And, you know, you, you will only routinely do it once, you know, as a referee. So you've got to do it and do it well. Another one of these bright young prospects in the military who could follow your footsteps in a way. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> head up into the Football League and, and onwards. We, we've got another bright, uh, bright, well, I say bright young talent, someone who's really doing well in the women's game, of course, uh, Lauren Impey from the RAF. So, I mean, football on the pitch and with the whistle, they're making an impact. Yeah, absolutely. Lauren's doing really well. She's out in Japan at the moment with the PGMOL. So, you know, she's got, I think, 15 days out there on an exchange programme. So that's really good for her. She's recently been promoted. So if you are watching Lauren, you know, congratulations and keep doing what you're doing. The ball to the back post. Andy Matthews was onto it. You know what? Just, just a, that was a good chance for him, for that size that he's got. It was a fairly free header, actually. He just seemed to miss it. If you are watching uh, on YouTube, Facebook, we've got both open, so please do uh, get in touch and we will read out the best of the comments as much as we can. Um, tell us where you're watching from. I see Cat Beaver's watching on YouTube. She enjoyed herself last night, I'm sure. So she'll be hoping the RAF can turn this around. Good layoff from Debenham to Campbell. Rawlins. Looking for something for Debenham to chase, but that's, I mean, credit to Debenham, but that is a size mismatch if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Jack Debenham, who, my, my um, best memory of Jack Debenham, best highlight I've seen him do, I went down to an RAF Cup semi-final a few years ago and he scored four wow. in, the, in the Cup semi-final. And one of the goals, I'd, I'm not understating this, was the best first touch and finish that I've ever seen. It might, it's not understating it, I swear. That'll be a free kick to the RAF, I think. Not quite sure where that, which way is that gone. It seems it's to be definitely embraced yeah. Jack Denham. <laughs> Referee, another another decision to make. It's it's lively at the moment. It's just gone a little bit scrappy, hasn't it? I think this is a chance now for the referee just to get into the two sets of players and say let's let's just calm it down a little bit. Ross Batten on Facebook says uh, Sean Thompson has cracking legs. I'm sure he'll be very pleased to hear that when he watches his back. It'd be interesting to see who our uh, furthest distance listener is tonight, Kyle, or watcher, should I say. Exactly. So if you could post in the comments where you're watching and listening from tonight, that'd be really appreciated. We've had, uh, we've had uh, a Ukraine mention already, so... Um, Jack Debenham's got a yellow card there, by the way, so I'm not quite sure what happened in the air. He isn't the tallest of men, he, he won't mind me saying that, so maybe he needs to take an advantage up there. <laughs> Jack Debenham missed most of the pre-season for the RAF, by the way. He's back in fleeing services, but due to his deployment in, in Cyprus, uh, he wasn't available for most of the game, but he's back now. Guess where this is going? Up towards Andy Matthews, clipped away from Debenham, and maybe the RAF can break here, because Phil Bright's got legs. Phil Bright can go. 
He needs options, really. But I have... Just where he's got to cut back inside and go onto his left foot, Carl. I think he'll struggle with that, you know, because he could penetrate down the right-hand side there, but he's opted to turn back inside. It is an interesting tactical decision, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, Sam Dawson at left-back is right-footed. Mm. So it's, a, it's clearly a tactical decision, these inverted full-backs. Brodie Gray, really good play to keep hold of it. It's another late challenge, it felt like. Referee lets it go towards Peel. He's scrappy out there, and just how the army are going to want it. Ayat does well, good turn of pace. Campbell was offside. Good That's decision. Right in our line, that, so I could see it myself. That was it's just the only the offside I've ever got right, I think, that car. <laughs> Rebecca Roth Rothwell is cheering on her brother Callum Cox, who makes his inter services debut tonight at right back, and so far has settled pretty well, considering he's up against Joe Spalding and Jay Goslin, players who can cause him problems. And actually, the army have settled pretty well since the goal. That goal was really calmed them and any nerves have seemed to have gone out the window that's a, a push from Sam Rawlings actually it'd be an army free kick in a dangerous Green. position as well didn't he? he didn't need to make that foul there a couple of rather uncharacteristic mistakes so far from the RAF defence Paula Brighthill is part of the Phil Bright fan club watching from Preston aren't we all the annual Phil Bright fan club comes out <laughs> to play. It seems like we get it every year. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure. Phil has joined us on commentary before. He is a character, <laughs> Phil Bright. I bet the heart was in the mouth when that challenge from Thompson went in on him because we, we certainly took a breath up here. And I can say that the Royal Navy senior squad are watching in Salou as part of their training camp. Um, Chris James and his team are watching. We will be able to see them in action this time next week when they face the army down in Portsmouth at Fratton Park. So they will definitely be watching very closely with what I'm told is TikTok star Manny Roach. So <laughs> I, I'm sure we'll set into that. Free kick then. Hit well by Callum Cox. Straight into Paul at Briggs' arms. Oh, you know, he didn't really test him there. Got the connection, didn't get the accuracy and that's always going to be a free kick that Gosling wants there. Rebecca Rothwell says Scarlett is also cheering on her uncle Callum Cox, so he's got his family watching. He might make he might make an impact if there's another free kick. He might just make a headline. Dawson into Thomas. Thomas again going long, surprisingly. Good win from Spalding. Can Debenham make any challenge? And there's a push in the back from Dawson. Referee said play on, Army couldn't take advantage. That's a ball over the top that Debenham might just get onto, you know. The Army have to be careful here, and the bounce of the ball just went in their favour. <laughs> you got to look at the bounce there, Debenham just couldn't get it under control, could he? Uh, we've got someone watching from uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. That oh, wow. might just be the furthest. I'm sure they've got nicer weather there than here as well. We'll just wait to the annual Shrewsbury downpour that'll uh, wash us <laughs> all the way, Kyle. Oh, looking forward to that one. That'll be in uh, two weeks' time, March the 20th, something we are calling... Uh, well, there's, there's lots of names going around the team at the moment, but it's definitely going to be a wild Wednesday of BFBS sport, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we've got the women's inter-services match between the RAF and the Navy. We've got the men's inter-services match between the RAF and the Navy. And also on the same night, we will be live with inter-services boxing from Aldershot, so three big, big inter-services events, one day, all live. <laughs> see, I can see Ash Cunningham down there, the uh, Army women's assistant coach, taking charge for the uh, the team this year with uh, the usual head coach away. The Army women's team are here supporting the Army, which is good to see. Tracy Jane Ayat is watching from Lincolnshire, Aaron Ayat's family. I'm told uh, Sam Dawson is actually left-footed, so maybe that is why we can, we're seeing ah, Bright okay. at right-back. Um, at the end of the day, military football, it is sometimes about putting um, round pe square, square pegs in round holes, <laughs> is, it, is that the yeah. phrase, yeah? Um, depending on player availability, deployment, etc. And ultimately, they want to be in the starting eleven. You yeah. know, and and you know, Phil's got the ability to play at right-back. It just might impact him you know, as they look to push down the right, as we've seen a couple of times already. Long ball looking towards Peel. 
Rawlings has got a real physical test there with Peel, hasn't he? Mm. Be Bryant over the free uh, the throw the throw in. Taylor Dixon is from an undisclosed lo location on YouTube, so clearly very important work happening, but supporting the army through and through. There's no relation to you, Kyle, is it? No relation, no. Dixon name spreads far and wide, I'm afraid. <laughs> Spalled into Thomas. What can the RAF do here? Because we are, well, just over 25 minutes gone here. And since the Army goal, apart from the one Spalding chance, the RAF haven't really laid a glove so far. Really rattled them, that goal, I think. Yeah. Craig Horseman is watching from Scotland. Uh, rain, uh, dry here, so hope it's raining heavily in Salou. There you go, Navy team. There you go. He's a legend of uh, inter-service uh, football, is, uh, is Jordy. I hope you're doing well, mate, up in Scotland. Kearney then with the kick. And that should be easy for Bright. Free header, heads down towards Campbell, couldn't get there. RAF struggling to get their main players involved at the moment. The Army are uh, getting a bounce of the ball, which they hoped would have dropped to them. It didn't. Brody Gray, tidy player in midfield, Brody Gray. Bro Brody Gray. He's someone who quite comfortably... Split, uh, takes takes away any attack, splits them up, gets involved. Un underrated player in the midfield, I say that much. Goslin looks long towards Campbell. Good touchdown towards Phil Bright, but Clay Bryant straight in there, and it's a good challenge actually from the Army left back. It looks physical, but it was a good tackle. Yeah, it was a, it was a good challenge. You know, they're, they're both watching the ball, both intentions to play the ball, and comes through and, and just wins it cleanly. Bright then has got Debnam or Campbell, but they've also got the, the rather large army centre-back waiting behind, but it's in towards Campbell, poor touch from the arm, uh, RAF skipper. And that's one for Greg Peel to chase down. Calmly done from Thomas. Debnam, I, I thought, might have come from an offside position there. Mm. Lines on the flag stayed down. Timed it well. And that's a good sp spin from Lewis Simmons. Louis Simmons will go for it because why not? Thomas with a good block. So Louis Simmons, who's someone who's come up from the army under 23s, has impressed in that tournament and he's impressing here tonight as well. Louis Simmons, yeah, he looks really sharp. You know, he, he gets on the ball and he's really progressive. That is a free kick. I wasn't sure if that was another yellow card there. I think he just pointed that way. I couldn't quite see the card come out from where we're standing over in this stand. Simon Parker's watching from Portsmouth. It's dry and cold here. We, I think we're, we're running a weather channel as well now. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Janet Turner is uh, watching her son, I believe. Jamie Turner watching watching uh, Jamie Turner score a goal. That's, yeah, that's and he lovely. took it really well. He did. Yeah, Free kick for Cox. He's flicked oh. on. And that's twice now that Andy Matthews... He's been left alone in, and I don't think he knew much about it, which is probably a good thing for the Air Force. I'm quite surprised that the tallest man on the park has been able to get two mm -hmm. unmarked... Goal scoring opportunities. Yeah, I'm sure when Jamie watches that back, he'd be really impressed. You know, the composure of his finish. Probably didn't expect to be gifted that so early in the game, you know, of this magnitude. And he goes through and slots it, slots it past the keeper. It was a really well taken finish. That is for sure from Jamie Turner. Uh, Jamie Turner, who I mentioned earlier, uh, started his footballing career in the youth team at Manchester United. So he's got some pedigree, I will say that. Um, currently, uh, playing for Abbey Holton United uh, down in the non-league. And actually, it's, it's something that we see that makes an impact at this level. Playing week in, week out, which not all of these players do because of their work ability, uh, work schedules, etc. But some are playing week in, week out for pretty decent levels, semi-pro teams. Yeah, it, it absolutely makes a difference. And... You know, unfortunately, through deployments, some might and family, some might be not be able to commit to it. You, know, you only see the likes of you know Keith Emerson and, and Luke Kearney, you know, stalwarts of armed forces football who play week in week out at you know the highest levels of non-league, and you just see you know the difference within them compared to some other players. Phil Bright clears away in the middle of the uh, penalty area. That'll be a corner for the army, and this is what we're talking about of the height advantage potentially. Lots of people getting involved. Tune on the RAF from Naples. So we've got lots of international support. Dan Storm, and that's a name that uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we've seen before. Dan's a great little player. We, we, we've definitely got some great goals of his in our archive. I'll tell you that much. Corner for the army then. Whipped in. 
towards the near post. He's headed on, and he's to the back Two of the nil. net. The Army have a second, and it's Lewis Simmons who was waiting, prowling at the back. Flicked on at the near post. Lewis Simmons scores, and the champions are in complete disarray. It's 2-0 to the Army. And he's, he's once again, he's left free in the box. You know, they've left Andy Matthews in there. They've now left Simmons in there. And you know, it's quite a simple finish once it comes across. Absolute credit to the Army for this performance so far in the first 30, 35 minutes. Uh, that, let's not make any bones about it. For a lot of people, the Army weren't the favourites coming into this tonight. The RAF have got the reputation they've got for a reason. But tonight, the underdogs are... Well, proving their worth so far. 2-0. John Knighton on Facebook says, disappointment for the RAF rugby players, by the way, lost Le Crunch to the French Air Force. Uh, we'll have action from that on our social media channels and our, on our website tomorrow. So, I just think he, uh, he couldn't miss us too much, could he, Kyle? He had to watch and tune in, and he's probably got it on loud. If there's any military sport around, John Knighton is watching, I, I can <laughs> promise you corner for the RAF they need something before half time you would think to really get back into this 2-0 to the army yeah we've got a shout out to I think it's Elise Argyle watching her big cousin Callum Cox there you go that's your shout out for you day day Cam Brook someone watching from California as well so the uh, UK Armed Forces Inter-Services Championship taking over America taking over Hollywood corner then to the RAF can they do what the Army just did? Headed away from the big centre-back, Andy Matson, Andy Matthews. It's recycled from Sam Dawson. And that's looking towards Brody Gray, I think it is, on the left-hand side. The RAF will not have expected this. I mean, no team expects to lose, to be in a losing position, of course, but... The Army have really impressed in this first 35 minutes. That'll be a free kick to the Army as well, I think. That looks like it's Lewis Simmons battling back. You know, he's got the, the sting in his tail after his, uh, after his great finish there. I mean, we, we say about in these fixtures about who turns up on the day, who, who performs on this pitch in an in-services level. The Army have clearly got the, the bit between their teeth tonight. They have got the passion they have really thrown themselves into uh, full-bloody challenges let's say some a bit more naughty than others sure but they've been quicker to the ball they've been harder in the tackle they've got two goals to show for it mm. Callum Wilkinson is supporting from Sonny Senalaga, Senalaga? yes uh, Callum Wilkinson of course an army uh, striker former army striker who has got more than enough goals in this <laughs> fixture Kenny's long kick then flicked on and it's Turner looking to make something from it. Lee Phillips, we haven't saw too much of him. We haven't had to. Turner heads it on. Debenham clears. And the ball will not quite bounce out. Campbell keeps it in. And Bright says, let's get rid of that. So if you're the RAF head coach here, 2-0 mm -hmm. down, five minutes, ten minutes to go till half-time, what what are you saying to the players? Because I'd imagine a certain level of let's just keep calm and keep w what we're doing would go into it. Yeah, I think they need to revert to how they started. You know, they started well. They started composed. The I'd say they played out well. They didn't. You know, it was a, it was a simple mistake. You know, they were playing the football. They, they, they got on the front foot, and then you know the, the mistake that led to the first goal seemed to rock them, and I don't think they've recovered from it, Kyle. To be honest, and that just shows there. They are rocked. They are certainly rocked. Uh, on YouTube, someone said, can we have a shout-out for uh, Mitch Whitley, who never made the RAF squad today, but uh, must have been in, in, in contention. He's watching on. He probably isn't enjoying what he's seeing so far. And already the uh, army are flying RAF. The grounded jokes have started. Good ball in. Oh. And a real chance. And again, he's left free in the middle. I just wonder if Sean Thompson will watch that back and go, maybe I could have been a little bit braver there, take mm. a chance. Because Christian Paul at Brig was quite grateful that the ball ended up in his arms there, I think. Callum Walker has uh, 
giving a shout out to the referee team and the officiating team wishing them good luck. The Navy refs, it's Callum, he's a great lad. Oh, the, it's one there by Ayer, really good play. And he's pulled it back to just a, just too far away from Gosling. He will fall for Bright, he'll get the ball in. Campbell oh. attacks it. Wasn't the best header, couldn't really get the direction he wanted. And this is where we see Luke Kearney walk out 12 yards for absolutely no reason and <laughs> consume about three minutes. Uh, it uh, said in the programme that Luke Kearney's favourite player at the moment is Emmy Martinez. <laughs> Shall we act surprised by that? As a Villa fan, <laughs> I appreciate it, you know, I, I see it, I get there it. And uh, they're taking it short so Luke Kearney can take all the time he wants here. And go towards Peel again. Rawlings does win the header. Good play from the RAS centre back. Ayat to Debnam. And Debnam and Gosling nearly got in each other's way, but they had a lot of space. Over the top for Spalding. The ball just bounced away from him. It's a bit scrappy back there, but the army do get it clear. And Thomas will be rushed by Thompson. Let us know where you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, if, if whichever platform you're using. Uh, but let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting. A note has just gone on there from Andy Cook to, to Phil Bright, so maybe we might just see a change in shape, tactics or ideas from the RAF. I think they need to do something because it's not working. You know, we looked at Jack and um, Jake getting caught up. You know, that's two players that you want playing off each other, not getting caught up in midfield and arguing about, you know, who's going to play off who. That's a free kick to the RAF, backing into him a little bit there. Shane Mitchell is cheering on Jordan Sowerby. Sowerby, Sowerby. we're going to go with Sowerby, um, who's on the bench for the RAF tonight. We could see him later in the game. And we've got a massive shout out to Leighton Peels, who's a very proud watching from Whitby to see his uncle Greg. His uncle Greg is certainly put himself about and made himself a target so far up front. Hasn't got a goal to show for it yet. There has been a change from the RF, by the way. A real change in formation here. And we will try and make sense of it when it comes to a stoppage in play. But I think they've gone three at the back. I can see Rawlins and Thomas have sort of switched around a little bit. I think it's going to be Rawlins, Thomas and Dawson in the back line. Phil Bright's now back in his Johnson. more preferred oh. left wing back three. position. Mm. I think Brody Gray will play right wing back. You've got Ayat and Debenham and Goslin in the midfield with Campbell now leading the line and Joe uh, um, Spalding on the left-hand side. So there has been a change to how the RAF are playing here. And you can just see there out of picture from Mike Campbell. He's just saying, just slow down, you know, really emphatically. Just relax on the ball. You know, I think... It's safe to, you know, the RAF have got the better ball players, but it's just not working out for them. Well, the Army have made this a fight. They've made it a battle, which the inter-services tends to be, and it's worked for them so far. Credit to... Here we go, and he's in. The Army, Simmons is in. Didn't quite bounce for him. Simmons across the box, good save. And Debnam clears. Paul at Brig. It was a good save, but actually he put it into a position that could have gone anywhere. The RAF get away with one. Louis Simmons has been really impressive. Wonder if this change in formation then for the RAF will make much of a difference. It's an army throwing an attacking position at the moment. Looked like handball there. Not quite sure the, the, the uh, referee or the linesman on the opposite side could see from their vantage point actually there. I was conveniently looking down there. <laughs> towards Campbell I have seen the RAF play this formation in pre-season by the way um, I saw them play uh, against Oxford University I want to say um, and they did trial this three at the back formation and I was told by Andy Cook to it's just an option for the inter-services well that option has been called upon plan B is here I am looking to get away but it's well cut out there from number 11 from the army Lee Phillips Good ball up towards Greg Peel. He's got Thomas now challenging him. 
good. I think the more direct play from the army is working for them. You know, the Greg's working hard up there, and then you got feeding. You got the lads feeding off the scraps. You, you've got um, Lee Phillips and uh, Louis Simmons, who's I'm really impressed with, to be honest, Kyle. He stood out tonight. He's a live wire. He's fast. He's sharp. When he gets on the ball, he gets his head up, you know, and he's progressive as he goes forward. He is someone who's just willing to take the game to the RAF, and that's sometimes what you need on a night like this, on inter-services nights. We mentioned Greg Peel quite a lot. I just want to point out in the uh, programme that he says Greg, Peel, Greg Peel's pinnacle of his footballing career was the honour of being captained by Sean Thompson. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if Sean was in the room when that was written. <laughs> Well, Sean was put in charge of uh, writing the uh, the pen picks for the programme. Sean isn't the army captain tonight, by the way. That uh, honour has gone to Luke Kearney. And I think we've got a chair. I think the uh, officials had a, a slight uh, issue with their equipment, the flag potentially, but we should be about to get underway again. Turner. Back to Cox. And now Simmons. You see what he was looking for, but it, the pass was misplaced. And now Spalding will give that chase put the pressure on the army defence and be an RAF throw now in an attacking position. Good, and this is where they now need to squeeze up, you know, you're moving into the, the latter stages of the first half. A goal here now could change, you know, change everything for the second half. I'm yeah. sure the army won't want to concede at this time either. Be the worst time you would think. Bright now can get the ball into the penalty area towards Campbell. It'll go over his head. Brody Gray's bouncing in there and he's waiting for it. Kearney with a punch. And the referee has given a free kick. <laughs> And Luke's been snipered from, yeah, from the top of the EBB stadium. I can, I, I can, I can guess at this point that <laughs> Luke Kearney. No, I think, I think we should empathise and took, say he looks took really whack. injured. I'm going to say he's he took really a whack. injured. Let's give, him, let's, let's give him the benefit. I think he took a whack. Um, you mentioned EBB stadium, by the way. I found out when I was here earlier. We've been calling it the EBB stadium. It's actually meant to be the Ebb stadium. I didn't know that. No, but now we do. Welcome to the Ebb Stadium, everybody. Uh, shout out to while we've got a minute. Um, uh, Kenny Simmons, Lewis Simmons' dad, is watching from Blackpool, watching his son have an absolute stormer of a first half. Uh, we've got a shout out for Roger and Nella watching on from Newport. Their son is the RAF goalkeeper coach, which I can get his name because it's in my notes. So now that you've done it, I will ask. I will. I will find it. Uh, RAF goalkeeper coach Richie Lancaster. There you go. Um, shout out to Ellis Young as well for nearly making the team. I'm sure there's a lot of players who have nearly made the team, and Luke Kearney has received uh, treatment. He looks fine to me, Kyle. What do you reckon? <laughs> Experienced uh, army goalkeeper, I will say that much. <laughs> uh, George Corey says shout out to Scott Jackson. Also, one of the army coaches is uh, his brother, Paul Curry. George Dick is one of the uh, local referees up in Liverpool, where I currently live at the moment. Ah. He's, a, he's a great lad. Um, Thomas Nicholson says, hopefully Debo for the RAF scores another world. He like the Inter-Services Cyprus game. Yeah, it should be said. Um, Jack Debenham has already played one Inter-Services this year, as in 2024 already, um, in the Inter-Services Cyprus game, and he won for the RAF. So. Okay. Always forces sport across the world is happening. Luke Kearney, it seems, will soldier on. The resurrection of Kearney, part one. I'm sure there might be more parts if, uh, if the game gets a little bit tighter in the last stages. Joe Thomas then, whose mistake really started this RAF, well, not a good first half, let's call it that. Mm. Um, a, an uncharacteristic mistake which allowed J Jamie Turner to go through on goal and finish and from there the army have looked like they've grown in confidence with every minute it's really interesting Carl. just watching there when the army are out of possession they've literally got 11 men behind the ball and they're just blocking them out you know they've got minimal options the air force they're just really tight you just look at it now the solid the rigid the holding it you know they've got they're not going to move so far jimmy blair will be very pleased with his team. And mm. as we're approaching half-time, I would imagine that team talk goes something along the lines of keep as you are, yeah. do as you do, just don't get sent off, please. <laughs> Spalding comes inside for it. And that just shows where the RAF are right now. Absolutely. Joe Spalding having to come right into the middle to get anywhere near the ball. With three minutes of added time in this first half. Three minutes of added time in this first half. 
Three minutes, maybe, for the RAF to try and find something. And for the Army, they'll be, they'll be happy to see that half-time, I would imagine, actually, to reset again. Phil Bright finds Goslin. Three balls on for Debenham. He looks for Campbell. It wasn't the right call from Goslin, and he'll, he'll know that as well. Christian Paul at Big Brig does very well, actually, there, with the under pressure from Greg Peel. Peel will get to that, though. And we talk about the RAF getting a late goal in the first half. If it's 3-0, who knows what happens. This is where they're open and Campbell's through. He can Thomas. square it to Debenham. He's got a look at squaring it. Surely it's a really good he defending. Cuts it out really well, Andy Matthews. Well done. Superb defending from Andy Matthews. He's been a rock at the back in that first half. Andy Matthews. We, uh, we, we spoke to Andy Matthews in the build-up to this game and he... he it was the most positive interview I've seen in a very long time in the sense of he was just so happy to be playing football, particularly <laughs> at this time of the year. He loves it at inter-services time. Jake Gosling then with a uh, corner kick. It goes short again to Brody Gray. And Gray will look for the left-footed cross, charged down by Phillips and cleared away. And now Gray again. Unfortunate deflection off Ayat. Wasn't just quite not, the pass he was looking for. He's not given him any options in the final third of the Air Force. Oh, that's a late one. Referee says play on. Good advantage from the Navy official. Cross in towards the near post. It's flicked on. It's a chance at the back. And oh, Campbell does get his goal. The flag stays down. The man who was desperate to score in this inter-services does get his goal. The captain strikes when the RAF need him. And maybe, just maybe, they might be back in this game. Scrappy finish in the end. Luke Kearney did his best. Couldn't keep it out. And Daniel, that's for you. His old his old nemesis, old nemesis Michael Campbell gets on the score sheet. Well, we said about a late goal in that first half. What will that do for the RAF? We'll find out. I think the army will be really disappointed. You know, they they were really solid. You know, the last couple of minutes, and then they, they just kind of let it slip. A rash challenge allows Dave, you know, to play advantage. The ball comes across, and and they gift the Air Force a goal just on the on the on the crossbar half time. Absolute credit to the referee there, by the way. A terrific call to play the advantage, and the RAF do go and score from it. Cox now for the army coming inside. Finding Thompson, just let it flick through towards Peel, and actually the RAF can come forward to Goslin. Campbell, back to Goslin, looking for Spalding, and the RAF have got their tails up now. Spalding gets away, that's a late challenge for the referee. The linesman immediately says no. I'm not sure there was too much contact, actually, from our position. I think he, I think uh, Joe Spalding was expecting the contact, but he didn't quite come in. Either way, the Navy official said no foul. It just it looks, you know, like he takes the ball. You know, it's strong, looks pretty fair. He's closer to us. He <laughs> He's closer, closer than us. He, he was looking straight at it. Can't, can't have a better view, that's for sure. I had really good drop of the shoulder. And he'll look for the strike. Oh, good save. And Devin Devin in. And it's 2 2 on the stroke of half time. The RAF are absolutely triumphant. Wow. Where has this come from? Inter-services football never fails to give you drama. It's 2-2, and five minutes ago, the army looked comfortable. Jack Debnam, really good play to follow in. The shot originally came in from Sam Dawson, by the way. Good save from Kearney, kind of put it out into a position that Debnam could finish. And Debnam did finish. 2-2, Jack Debnam. Well, <laughs> Pretty I mean, we didn't expect this at all. We talked about a cagey affair, you know, it's been, but I think it's been the gifts for the goals that have, uh, you know, is the difference. And I'm, I'm ready to do it again for 45 minutes, oh. I tell you now. 2-2 two, two then, as we look towards half-time. Be a few more minutes, I'd imagine, with the goal, and be another minute or so. And the army, well... For 45 minutes, <laughs> they were superb. For two minutes, they've fallen apart. Here's Spalding. Credit to Andy Cookter, by the way, the RAF head coach changed things up. He did, he changed the shape and then, you know, they've, they've grasped it back. 
Daniel Debenham says, come on, the RAF. Get a goal, Dad, from the Debenham kids. Well, the Debenham kids in Cyprus would have been over the moon with that. Kenny on his weaker right foot. And that is half-time. Well, I think, I think I, it's time to have a breather. I mean, wow. The RAF, 2-0 down, heading into injury time, looked a little bit out of ideas. And then two goals, two scrappy goals as well, from inside the six-yard box. One from Campbell, one from Debnam, undoes all the good work the Army had. And they were good in that first 45 minutes of the Army. Absolute credit to them. Lewis Simmons in particular was impressed. He got himself a goal. Mm. It was Jamie Turner who opened the scoring. We have got a really exciting second half on, on our hands, I think. You know, a couple of minutes ago, you know, the Army are going in there with their heads held high. You know, RAF heads down, but now it's completely the, the tables have turned. You know, we look at the, the positive body language of the Air Force. Look at Mike Campbell going in there, you know, chest out, fist pumping the lads as he goes in. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be a good second half. It should be a very good second half. This is the excitement of Intercelsis football. But if you need a little bit more to understand it, how's about last year's highlights for you from all three Intercelsis matches from 2023? We'll be back for an exciting second half. Cross coming in from Sanchez Baker, right across the face of goal. The Navy then with a chance to put things in. It's a shot, goes just wide from Elliot Holmes. Thomas again. Opportunity then into the box. The number Shots seven, it's a in. good oh. shot, and it's a great save. Excellent work from uh, Elliot Holmes, I think it was, who was on the end of that, and brilliant goalkeeping from Pollock Brigg. Oh, and it's a great oh. effort, actually. Brilliant effort from, uh, it looked like um, Mike, Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell, yeah. He, yeah. See, he saw McCormack off his line and he, he seemed to go for it. Oh, the cross comes over. Oh, spilled by Pollock Brig. And the referee has set a penalty. penalty. And it's Elliot Holmes who will have the opportunity to put the Navy in front. We've got four minutes of stoppage time to play here. Big moments, big moments in this inter services. And it's saved. Oh, has it gone in? No, it's gone in. He, oh, and he's, he's so cross with himself, with Pollock Brig, because he thought he'd saved it, but then the ball just seemed to roll out of his hand and into the net. They're looking now at the RAF with their substitute uh, pushing forward uh, with Josh Story Randall. Edge of the box. Oh. oh, and it goes just just wide. Joe Thomas then has it. I think the RAF are looking for him now to get on the ball, John. And here he is. He's a game changer. That's a lovely ball through. Eventually collected, though, by the Air Force and Corrigan. Plays it in. Gosling. again. Chance, oh, and it's it's still in there. The Navy being forced to defend, and he's still going. Options are limited. Looking for other space. Him. That's a lovely ball through. Oh, and it's going oh. to be an equaliser. Surely it is an equaliser. And would you believe it's Brody Gray who's got on the end of it. But here is Roche. On the edge of the box, shoots, great save. And, well, Manny Roche then had a real chance then to create some glory for the Navy. And here's Matty Evans getting a touch of the ball. Nice little cross. Nice control for the Army, and it's a, a shot on target, and that was uh, Sam Atkinson with the shot, blocked by the defence. Navy having to really hold out here, and I'm sure that uh, the uh, Navy keeper 
Lawrence McCormick pretty pleased to get his hands on the ball in the end. One back by the Royal Navy. Can they drive it forward? Good recovery, though, from Lee McCombie there. Did really well. Ball goes forward. Oh, chance for the Army. And it's going to be in the back of the net. And it's Scott McCarthy who has got this opening goal. It's a beautiful through ball from Lee McCombie. And there was McCarthy to touch the ball home and put the Army one up. Oh, Glendon loses out. Opportunity yeah. for the army to get a second oh, here. Penalty. Ball goes down, penalty. and the referee says that is a penalty. Well, Harry Beckley went through the challenge. What do you think, chaps? Yeah, all day long that square pass from uh, right back inside to the centre half. You know, you can't suicide, isn't it? Playing a square ball inside just gets nicked by the centre forward. You're completely outnumbered, unbalanced, and uh, he's driven. And uh, unfortunately, him sort of tackled from behind. Thompson then against McCormick. Shoots, sends the keeper the wrong way. Great, great Army message. two, our Royal Navy nil. The next goal is going to be absolutely crucial. Oh, and it's a chance for a, a third for the Army. And he's not going to miss that, is he? Scott McCarthy wins the rebound and the deflection. It was really unfortunate then on Lawrence McCormick, who came out. He thought he cleared it, but the ball went in the direction of McCarthy. He's got his second goal, and suddenly it's 3-0 to the Army. Here's Kerr. Plays that ball wide. Lovely control from Sean Powell. Paul on, on the edge of the box, maybe get, looking to go alone. Plays it back to his substitute. To, um, oh, just a wide from Kieran Feeney. Well, just in the last few minutes, the Navy just showing that they're not out of this game at all. Navy, an awful lot to do then in the second half of this fixture as we get underway here at the EBB Stadium here in Aldershot. Oh, and straight away the Navy with a chance, and it's a penalty. It's just what they needed. Oh, that is extraordinary. Right in these early moments of the second half, the Royal Navy are awarded a penalty kick. My goodness me, this yep. could change the whole nature of this match. Kearney up against Holmes. Oh, and he's missed it. It's hit the post. Oh, my goodness me. A missed penalty. Would you believe it? Nice work again from McCarthy, who's been absolutely outstanding for the yeah. Army tonight. It's been brilliant, and he's into the penalty area. Still going. Bounce. Shoots. Oh, oh, and it's just wide. What a brilliant run that was from uh, Scott McCarthy. Oh, and that was a real attempt on goal there from Cam Storey. Saw the goalkeeper off his line and went for it, and he wasn't that far away. Bill Bright. Thomas loses out. Chance then for Beckley into the penalty area. Eventually cleared by the Air Force, but that was a bit of a, a slip there. Ball through looking for Campbell. Oh, yeah, Campbell chasing it. Comes back. And that's a great shot. And oh, it's in the back of the net. Goal. Well, what a cracker. What an absolute corker. And the man who put that ball in the net is Aaron Ayat. What a cracker. And here come the Air Force looking for a second with Joe Spaulding on that right side. Spaulding approaches the penalty area, gets the shot. Oh, oh and my goodness, that was a magnificent save from Luke Kearney. Put the ball over the bar. Another in swinger. Oh, and another bar. great save. My goodness me, the RAF could have had three. It's nice control there on that far side, though, from uh, Campbell. He cuts inside. Still going in. Campbell takes a shot. Oh, and another brilliant save from Carney. Aaron Ayat has had a terrific uh, start to this game, but not only has he scored the goal, he's been so involved in the game. There he is again. Great ball. And here come the Air Force once more, and this is Spalding. Spalding into the back post and the ball goes wide it'll be another corner free kick then to the army and they've got to a lot of people in the box there a lot of tall chaps hoping to get on the end of this one 
Goes wide and into Goal. the back of the net. It's a brilliant header from Scott Hind. And the Army are back level. It was a brilliant free kick. And, well, the Air Force didn't pick up Scotty Hind there. He went in round the back and he's put the ball in the back of the net. Jack Debenham chasing it. Involved in a bit of a tussle. And he comes out on top. Ball comes wide. Oh, oh and once again, the a chance miss then for Mike Campbell this time. Debenham, great challenge. And here he is again. Campbell's free. On the wide, on the right. Shoots. That's a great bit of play from the Air Force. Lovely through ball from Gosling. Now, what can the RAF do here? It's a lovely ball inside. Oh, it's oh. hit the post. Well, would you believe it? Another chance goes <laughs> away from the Air Force. And it couldn't have been any closer, really, could he? And the Air Force needs to do, obviously, something with it. Spalding approaching the penalty area, gets a cross in. Great ball. And on the end of it, oh, brilliant stop. That was magnificent defensive work from the Army. Looking short. Gosling is all over the pitch at the moment, gets the cross in. It's a beautiful one. Free header. And header. It's a goal. In the net. And who is the scorer but Sam Rawlings, the captain? Well, it took a little bit of magic, didn't it, from uh, Jake Gosling? That lovely cross. And there on the end of it was Sam Rawlings, the captain. Absolutely. Debnam. Now, that oh. was a great shot. Now, that really would have been a sensational way for him to finish, and that's a brilliant save as well. Wow, an amazing bit of play there. Michael Campbell then with a follow-up. We've just got a few moments left. Oh, Debnam. Debnam shoots. Again, <laughs> Carney <laughs> saves. Raising his, raising his arm, throw in, comes in. Everybody up there for the army. Cleared away. Look, look where Luke Carney is. Here he goes. Takes the shot. Well, it was speculative. What did I say, John, <laughs> earlier on? <laughs> Last chance potentially for the oh, army. Oh, Atkinson's in. Is he going to challenge for it? Goalkeeper gets there first. Well, very, very close, wasn't it? <laughs> it has been absolutely fantastic tonight. Amazing game. And there we go. And it comes to an end. And the Royal Air Force have retained the Constantinople Cup. They've beaten the army by two goals to one. And to be fair, no one could have given any more this evening than both of these two teams. They've absolutely entertained this royally. It's the ultimate team sport. fun and we're fitter than the lads. It's dynamic, it's fast paced. Well, it's certainly inter-services season, isn't it? Don't miss that tomorrow afternoon, inter-services netball, second game of the tournament, and it's an Army versus Navy rivalry, which is always a little bit feisty. That should be good. 3 p.m. tomorrow on the Force News YouTube channel. Join Kath and the team. But we're here at the Ebb Stadium in Aldershot, and we've witnessed uh, an incredible end to the first half. The Army were cruising 2-0 up, very good for 45 minutes. But we start this second half all level again, 2-2, the RAF... Well, had a blitz and absolutely blew the army away, so to speak. 2-2 two, two it is, and this should be very interesting. Scott Jackson's with me. Good and evening once again to those rejoining. So we've got um, the army, dare we say, throw, threw it away, thrown it away from goals from Jamie Turner and Lewis Simmons, you know, before Campbell came back and then Debenham just on the stroke of half-time scored to make it 2-2. Two, two. It'd be interesting to see what both managers said at half-time, Carl. Yeah, it'd be interesting how they line up as well. No changes at the break as far as I'm aware um, but the army now got us underway and it, it looks like the RAF will stick with their formation that worked at the end of the half the three at the back that's a poor kick from Christian Paul at Brig and a spin really good spin nearly anyway for Jamie uh, Turner Bryant can clear away the army now look 
what happened at the end of the first half, they've got to try and put behind them because if they focus on the the, the, the first 43 minutes or whatever <laughs> it was in the first half, yeah. they, they should be pleased with that. So, is it a hard thing to try and do to get them? I mean, as a referee, you probably know this more than anything. If you make a mistake, getting that out mm-hmm. of your mind and cracking on. Yeah, you've simply got to park it and move on. Do you know, is that have, have the army got the ability, do you know, the experience to park it and move on and, you know, come out the second half and, and and do what they did so well in the first half? You know, I spoke kind of commentator's curse from my behalf was that they, you know, they were set up so well. They were so strong, you know, out of possession. And then, and then yeah, two, two goals later, the Simmons is in again there. Oh, that's a strong challenge. Did with the ball there, Thomas. Simmons just nipped away from Bright, who didn't quite know he was there. Army now on the left-hand side, does well. Good ball in, not quite behind, and uh, the RAF will have a goal kick. So that's what Simmons is struggling after that tackle on the edge of the area. Well, strong. I mean, if the Army want to play strong challenges, it looks like the RAF are willing to beat them. Um, Simmons was very impressive in that first half, but, mm. I mean, we, we talk about the RAF's attacking talent. The Army have... Simmons, who's impressed, Turner, who's impressed, Peel has thrown himself about. We've seen Phillips get involved as well. But on the bench, they do have Owen James, who is someone that he's thought so highly of in the Army f- football setup, and particularly in the youth calf setup. To come in two years into your forces career and not have played for the Army and into services, but lead the line in yeah. France at the Kentish Cup, he is someone that could come off the bench and really cause a problem for the Army. Not just him. You also have uh, Harry Beckley from the Royal Artillery who could come on and really cause a problem too. Alfie Moulding's on the bench, by the way, for the Army, hoping to make his first inter-services, service, inter-services senior appearance. Um, he was the under-23 captain for a couple of years and recovered from a horrific injury to his leg. He missed 12 months wow. and, and fought back into his into his career, captain the under-23s last month. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't the best Army performance in that tournament. But he's on the bench, so if they need a, a, a centre-back to really get involved again, the Army have them. There's Kearney. plenty of options on the Army bench there. Kearney towards Peel. Peel trying to make it a fight, but Rawlings did well, actually. A fall for Bright to clear, and Campbell looking to get involved. Campbell is really trying to be that physical presence for the RAF, but against the likes of uh, and Andrew Matthews, he's he's got a job on his hands there. <laughs> It'll fall for Phillips. And after the excitement at the end of the first half, the start of the second half has just just a, just a little quiet. Li- yeah, yeah. Little nerves, maybe. But this is how we started the first half, you know, until we, we came to life after seven, eight minutes, you know, from a mistake. But, you know, it looks like the army is settle, settling on the ball now. But it's turning on a, on a nice edge. Here's Cox. Back to Luke Kearney, whose experience would have been so key in that dressing room. Absolutely. To, to calm things down. You've got young players in this Army team who will have been shell-shocked at what they've just witnessed. Matthews is always going to win that, but he's giving it away to Brodie Gray. There you go, plenty of options. Phil Bright steaming down the left-hand side. Good ball from Great Dawson. First touch. Bright Inside. through the legs, nice. really good play. Goal side. He's come across well. Cut out well there. It's a great tackle by Craig, Craig Stevenson. Stevenson. He had to make it as well because you had Joe Spalding raring through on goal, if not. No changes then at the break, as we say. Here's Ayat into the penalty area. Scrapping and battling for the ball from Callum Cox, who comes away with it. And the RF will have another throw as the ball nearly takes out both of our cameras. We're safe. <laughs> He's better get our phones out then, Carl. Phil Bright then, a, an experienced UCAF player as well. And this is what we are seeing in these inter-services games. As you'd expect at the top level of, of military football, these top UCAF um, players who play together in the Kentish Cup or against the Irish Defence Force or the German Bundesliga, these big fixtures that uh, we are expecting to see later in the year as well. Here's Brody Gray, who's quite comfortably actually transitioned from defensive midfielder to, to right wing back it kind of makes you question why he started how he started you know he obviously knows a lot more about his, his team and you know how he was going to set up and 
the minute he switched it up, you know, things change for them and they look much more comfortable sat how they are now. Dawson wide for Bright, who's managed to get involved in the game. It was his cross that led to the opening goal. Bounce all the way through, as the opening RAF goal, I should say. Bounce all the way through for Campbell. Dawson that was a, a risky pass from Dawson. He gets away with it. Now Dawson again. Yeah, RAF space. starting to play their football. Spalding wide for Bright. Phil Bright will get the ball into the penalty area and Matthews says that's enough of that. Corner kick to the RAF. Campbell was just caught in his heels a little bit there, I think. Wasn't caught in his heels when he streamed at the back post to make it 2-1. And I said to you earlier, he, he, he told me <laughs> desperate to score. That more than anything would have been desperation to score at 2-0 down. But he is a player who knows what it's like to score on this pitch. A hat trick two years ago. And you never know where this second half's going to go. Corner taken short again. Goslin into the penalty area now. Cut out so by much. Lewis Simmons, who can defend, attack, everything yeah. tonight. I've been really impressed with him, Kyle. I haven't seen him before. And, you know, he's absolute live wire, like I said in the first half. Um, I think he's, if I'm being honest, he, look, he still looks like he's struggling after that bit of contact outside the box down in front of us. But he's not going to offer to Jimmy to come off, is he? Absolutely not. Corner kick, it doesn't go short, it's into the penalty area, it's flicked oh, off, it's what a great a save. save! Luke Kearney showing all of his experience there and a big strong hand to tip it over the bar. I think it, I'm not quite, I think it might have been Mike Campbell who got the header. Really good save from Luke Kearney. Point blank range as well, those are the sort of moments that really can desire a football match. So it will be another RAF corner. Goslin to go over and take. If you are watching, please do let us know where you are watching on Facebook or YouTube. Goslin swings the corner in. It's kind of miss hit actually. Bounces all the way through. That could have gone anywhere. Army do get it clear. But they've got nobody up top, no options. You know, so they got to sit back in now and defend when it when it comes back oh Hyatt did well for the start but the pass was loose Aaron Hyatt who scored an absolute thunderbolt in Shrewsbury last year by the way that was a goal mm. that really I mean I put the highlights together a few days ago and you were on commentary with John <laughs> and it sort of took the breath away from both of you That's here's Goslin for Goslin oh I just don't think they were on the same page there Campbell and Goslin no, neither were the goalkeeper and uh, the army defender there, but we will play on. Phil Bright looking for Spalding. To be fair to the army defender in that situation, I think it may have been uh, Craig Stevenson. If in doubt, just get rid yeah, of it, yeah. as Matthews does there. That's loose, though. Turner. Thompson. Army trying to get forward. Pass was just behind him, and they'll have to recycle it. Play Bryant. He switches on to Lewis Simmons there. It was on, but it doesn't find him. Not with any accuracy there. And neither's that from Christian Paul at Brig. Just a little bit of a low point at the moment. I, I wonder if that's when you see the first half turn out the way it did with that that barrage of late goals from the RAF. I wonder if it's that mindset of you know what this game could turn in a moment. You don't mm. want to take any chances. There's a lot of caution out there at the moment. That's up towards Peel. Good win from Dawson. Spalding on towards Campbell. Matthew's got a flick. No. The army just can't quite get any sort of rhythm going, but that'll do. That's a good ball through to actually to Phillips. He's got Peel in the penalty area if you can find him. It's Bryant trying to make his way through from left back and it's out from Sam Rawlins. Can we look as the army attack? They're still, you know, not, not over committing with, you know, keeping a solid five at the back. And not committing too many men forward. I don't think they want to get caught out. Well, Jimmy Blair knows what he's doing. There's no doubt about that. He took the infantry to great success inside Army football. Ended up getting the Army senior team job. That cross will not lead to anything. And it, last year he wasn't... I think I believe it was last year he wasn't actually uh, available on the touchline. He was away with deployment. And this is the year he's really been able to get it into his squad and get his ideals across... And in the first half, he would have been pretty pleased with the army performance, not necessarily the scoreline in the end. 
Paul at Brigden to take this goal kick for the RAF. And we talk about experience at one end with Kearney. Paul at Brig mm. knows all about in services football. But he's been pushed hard, I will say, by a couple of really good young RAF goalkeepers. I saw them in training on Monday, and Paul at Brig has to perform in these um, big matches or he will be out because there are people, there are players who are ready to take his shirt, and that's exactly what you want from service football. Thomas. And now Ayat. Dawson, who shot, barreled off Kearney to lead to the RAF equaliser. I believe these players are aiming for a cameraman, but we'll, uh, we'll get away with it for now again. We've got Jack Debo's parents watching. Here's Campbell. Great sliding Great tackle from Andy Matthews, who has been very good at the back there. Debnam's ball in. And at the back post, Phil Bright is coming into it. Cleared away by Cox. Gosling, though. Spalding's onside. And Spalding will go for goal. Charge down. Spalding has his hands on his head. He knows that was a pretty good opportunity. Matthews will win that quite comfortably. And the Army now will hopefully, for them, get it clear that's a foul. And that will be at the end of the RAF attack. I should mention um, and Andy Matthews is impressed. But we shouldn't be surprised. He plays step four football. Mm. He's one of the... Uh, he's one of the military players who plays at the highest level that, that, that they can at the moment and he impresses for Thatcham Town week in week out we're told he's impressed tonight yeah he's a solid force at the back you know he's an imposing character he's, he's good in the air he can play as one or two straight passes but you know he, he can clearly play and you, know, you can see him he's talking he's organising the back line and I think his experience has been vital and he is someone I believe who's not he's quite new to um, in services football well, no, sorry, take that back, actually. He is, he's had six-year tenure, actually, so I'm surprised he's not involved in the UCAF setup. but maybe this might be his year. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we, if we wind the clocks back, you know, we had Rob Falkins and um, who's the other big lad that we had at the back for him? How can we forget him? Absolute character. Uh, his, his name's escapes me. Uh, but the UCAF have had some top centre-backs over the years, that's for sure. Absolutely. Mike Campbell. And he, he was never going to get in front of Fox, do you know? And, and no. Um, and they do have some top centre-backs now for him to try and force his way through. And I'll be honest, they're on the opposite end of the field at the moment. That partnership between Rawlings and Thomas has been impressive for the RAF and for UCAF over the last few years. So they are going to take some dislodging. Rawlings will have to deal with that there and does. And it goes all the way back composed play from Ayat who's going about his business quite well in this second half here's Bright who has looked bright since the formation change that's one for Spalding to chase who does have pace Kenny comes and Kenny will not see it out he'll get rid of it it's a bit scrappy again at the moment Bright Wide for Thomas, and he switched, by the way, with Rawlins. He's my apologies, it was Ryan Paddock, how could we forget him, do you know? Ryan, <laughs> yes. Him and Fox, do you know, two great characters, and uh, always always difficult to referee, for sure. <laughs> you have to keep your eyes on him. Here's Ayat, speaking of eyes. Pass to Debnam, who was allowed to get a hold of that. I was surprised it wasn't cut out, actually. Bright. An attacking fullback is the best way to say it. Goslin. Put out well, and uh, the RAF will recycle again. I think we're looking towards the bench now. Do you know we're an hour in? Poor clearance, actually. And it's Turner who's looking for Peel, who would have been offside. And Turner's quite frustrated there, not just with his poor pass that didn't work out, but actually, if Peel would have got himself onside there and made that little bit of extra effort, the army could have been in. That's looking for Bright, who hadn't made that extra effort. He's got Campbell in the penalty area. He's looked towards him. It's Michael Campbell. Oh, it's 3 2. And the RAF bench goes wild. He loves it in Aldershot, absolutely loves it. A hat-trick two years ago, well, he's at the double now. And the RAF have completed the turnaround, a performance, a comeback of champions. Well, we wouldn't have said that 20, 20 30 minutes ago at game play time, would we? 
Absolutely not. The RF will be making a change, by the way, while they celebrate. It is. It looks like they're bringing Michael. They Campbell are off. bringing Michael Campbell off. So guess what, mate? You are not getting a hat trick. <laughs> and the man coming on is Luke, uh, Luke Preen, who uh, Andy Cooks is just just giving him a, a, a message, say get into him to Luke Preen, and uh, he will indeed. The army are also making some changes. Uh, Callum Cox's night is over. Uh, Luke Greenway comes on. And uh, Mike Campbell, it will be about to leave the field. He's just handing over the captain's armband to Sam Rawlins. A good night then for Michael Campbell. So desperate to score in this tournament. He had a, a pretty blighted 2023. He had injury against the Navy, missed chances against the Army. But he's put it right today. Two goals, and the RAF are now 3-2 up. And on comes Luke Preen, a man who's been earmarked as, well, the next Michael Campbell. Uh, the army change saw Callum Cox come off for Luke Greenway. Yeah, Luke Breen. I asked a few of the RAF boys on Monday uh, a couple of quick-fire questions. One of those quick-fire questions was, who's the loudest in the dressing room? All four people I asked said Luke Breen. <laughs> so... Uh, from the northeast, Luke Preen was a major part of the under-23s over the last few years. Um, and in fact, I think he'll probably be the first person to say it. Probably underperformed at under-23 level, but he, the talent is there. And maybe senior levels where he really shines. The army needs something to shine now. Losing for the first time in the game. I think they'll be severely disappointed. You know, two nil up to go three-two down, and the the RAF looks stronger. They really do. Preen's going to get involved there. Well defended by Simmons. And Greenway's come on and gone up to the right wing, by the way. I think Louis Simmons is now playing right back. Which is a choice, a decision. Bright's pass was poor towards Preen, but he'll get back onto it. And that looks like a foul by Greenway. Where that is one way to inter introduce yourself to the game. Interesting tactical choice, actually, from the army there. Mm. For the man that... I think we both agreed he's probably been the best army player out there, uh, Lewis Simmons. It looks like if anyone's going to change the ball, it's going to be Simmons. They're going to change the game, sorry. He gets on the ball, you know, like we said, he's nice and progressive. He's fast, he's not afraid to run, have a strike, take a touch. You wonder how dangerous he can be from the right-back position. But, on the same breath, uh, Phil Bright's been very dangerous since being moved to a left wing-back, so who knows? Brody Gray whips this in, headed away by Matthews once again. Hyatt was looking for Dawson, but the army will have control of that. And now they'll bring it forward with Evans. Sorry, that was Thompson on the ball. Matthews and Kearney. And now the army have to be the aggressors. For, for, for the longest part of this game, they've managed to play their football without being too aggressive in terms of attack, not necessarily tackles. <laughs> um, but they haven't had to take the game for the RAF. They do now, and it's going to be a different pattern to this, I'd imagine. RAF are preparing another change as we speak. Bright intercepts that. Gosling bundled in the back by Evans, but the referee lets it go. I think Dave's been pretty... He's, he's let the little niggly stuff go. Yeah. You know, he's not got too overly involved. He's let them play. They want to play. I'm pretty impressed with him, to be honest. I mean, cre credit to him, if he calls up for every little niggle that happens, this is going to be a stop-start whistle game. That's how inter-services can be. Sometimes you have to let it play. Spalding, Preen. And Luke Preen is determined to try and get involved in this game. That will be a free kick. And it'll be a yellow card as well. for Andy Matthews there. Was it Matthews or was it Stevenson? I'm not quite sure. I think it was Matthews, yeah. There's a slight difference in size. Yeah, the there is. Now I can fair. tell the difference. And that'll be a free kick in a good position for the RAF. Another yellow card to the army then. Tom Cook says, get Super Cam's story on. He might be the man to change it for the army. They've also got Harry Beckley and Owen James as attacking talent that could change this. Helen Richardson points out that you were talking about. I uh, know, yeah. How, how could I forget? So free kick then, Brody Gray and Jake Gosling over this one. Preen adds some more height, I will say that. Gosling goes for goal, not his best effort. The set pieces haven't been great tonight, Kyle, no. have they? No, and they're, they're, the players do have that ability on both sides as well, so it's a bit of a surprise. 
Kenny Almond on uh, YouTube says, is Luke Kenny, the goalkeeper, battling for the officials with his green shirts? Or both <laughs> of the keepers, even. Yeah. Well, it looks like Tom Cook's getting his wish, as we see Cam's story stripped down to uh, just a bib and his match shirt. He's took the jacket off. He's charging around the technical area, so it looks like he might be coming on for you. Matthews looking for Greenway. And Greenway's won the header, and unfortunately, Greg Peel wasn't on that wavelength. Once again, well played from Matthews, and now Greenway looking to make an impact off the bench. Gets it back from Peel. Good play. Oh. And I just wonder if those are the moments where you need to be a little bit more clinical and get the shot away. Overplaying potentially there from Greenway. It's great link up play, he just hasn't got the final ball. That's the end of Jamie Turner's night. Another man who has really impressed actually for the army. Took his goal so well, it should be said. Uh, I believe so. I just want to make sure that it's the right person coming on, that it's the right side of the team. In fact, it's not. Uh, sorry, the RAF change was what I saw. Jake Goslin comes off, so clearly the rumours of the injury means he can't play the full 90. On comes on Henry Jordan, and uh, for the Army, there's a change at, at centre-back. Alfie Moldin's come on for his senior inter-services debut, um, and I think the Army are going three at the back. So... Couldn't quite get who came off there for the army. I think it was Lewis Simmons who came off. It may just have been. Yes, I think you're right. I can't see a number seven. Yeah, you're right. Lewis Simmons has come off for the army. So, interesting tactical decisions on both ends. I think Jake Goslin's uh, departure is probably more physical and me medical related. But uh, we'll see what the army can do from this free kick. I think will the RAF try and shore it up now if they take Jake off? wonder where this is going. Andy Matthews looking to win it. Linesman's got his flag up, by the way. I think Matthews just straight offside. So, chance, though, for someone like Henry Jordan to really make an impact for the RAF. Yeah, your talisman, let's say, Jake Gosling has come off. Henry Jordan will hope to put in a performance that says, we don't need Jake Gosling. <laughs> Good play from the army. Turner's done really well to link things together. That's why I was a bit surprised when it, I thought Turner was coming off. Mm. I mean, equally surprised that Simmons has come off. Yeah, I think Simmons picked up a knock earlier on, and I didn't. He, he just looked a bit leggy from there, and then they switched him to right back. And you know, I thought he was really good at right wing, and you know, maybe freshen it up at right back. Great run from Turner. Good ball across too. Pull up Briggs as well. And I think looking at at the army attack right now, Jamie Turner's the best chance of getting them back into this. He's lucky and lively. Ball forward from Dawson, one for Spalding to chase, and we know he always will against Alfie Molding. And that will be a RAF throw. RAF bench were pretty confident with that one. Brett Ahern on Facebook says up the RAF. Superb. He will be supreme, sorry. Well, they have been supreme in a comeback so far. Army come away with this. Now Greenway. Greenway has done well twice there. Th took on two or three men, but a really good tackle back from Henry Jordan. Referee actually has pulled it back for a previous foul, I think. Yeah, I think he tried to let him play. You know, he signalled it. Greenway's come on and looked lively as well. Let's see what he can do as we head towards the final 20 minutes or so in this game the RAF lead by three goals to two which is not a scoreline I saw coming 20 minutes into this game long ball forward towards Math Matthews or Stevenson and Paula Brigg will use all of his experience here just to run that clock down a little bit more credit to the RAF for this comeback by the way Scott I think you have to Oh, and Paul at Brigg has just pulled up, actually. Is this out the Luke Kearney book of injuries? <laughs> Is it out the Luke Ch Kearney Chapter book of four. Injuries? I'm not sure. Went three, two up. He actually looked like he may have pulled mm. something then. Which is not what the RAF want to see. Chance for a drinks break, anyway. And a chance to reset if you're the Army, if you're the RAF, in two different ways. The RAF will now have to try and chore it up a little bit, sure. Mm. But the army 
What did you do? 20 minutes to go. Have they got to throw the kitchen sink at it? Throw the kitchen sink in an Owen James style fashion at it, maybe, Ooh. off the bench. Yeah, they're calling for come story online. Do you know, do you bring come on and, and, and go for it? A, a loss doesn't do anything, does it? You might as well lose by two rather than, than, than one. And, and, well, and, and chase goal the draw. difference does go into it in the end. Yeah, but, but I think you'd rather the point, wouldn't you? Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, rather, rather passionate uh, shouts from the, the 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 benches there. I think so. If you heard any any foul language, I do apologise. Yeah, we're not past the nine o'clock watershed yet, and uh, we've got the, uh, <laughs> a few shouts from the army army uh, directors. On YouTube, someone's predicted that it will finish five three. They haven't said to oh. who. So, I mean, we'll take as many goals as we can over here on BFBS. Long ball forward from Paula Brigg, who seems to be OK. Great flick on. Spalding could have played it through to Preen, actually, and couldn't quite get it out of his feet. That's a foul by Alfie Molding. Who seemed to gesture to the referee there. I'm not quite sure about what. It looked uh, a pretty simple I think, I simple think they wanted foul. to play the advantage. He can never win. He can try and draw. <laughs> Alfie Molding is a player who's known for his passion. He's captain at the under 23s for a reason. Leadership ability is there for sure. Be a free kick then, and it's actually going to be Dawson over this one. Took a delivery. It is very good. Lofted towards that back post. Thomas was coming onto it. It'll be a corner ball. Corner ball. I think the linesman wasn't quite sure for a second <laughs> there. But uh, after taking a bit of a signal from the official, the referee, uh, it will be an RAF corner. And a fourth goal for the RAF might just seal this. You don't want to say it too early, but who knows? Stuart Morgan says Owen James will cause problems for sure. That'll be a throw to the RAF. I've noticed that a lot of the RAF corners have gone short, by the way. We mentioned about the height difference in the team. Mm. Stu Morgan, the uh, RN under-23s manager, I think that is. It is, yeah. Royal Navy under-23s manager, Stu Morgan, who will be very pleased with uh, how the under-23 championship yeah. worked out for him. And his first year of a project, by the way, because he did say to us, he said to our cameras that, look, I've come in, it's a three-year project, but at the end of the third year, if we're challenging for the title, great. <laughs> he really played that down and convinced yeah, us all. Stiff. Long throw then from Debnam. I will flick it in, and uh, unfortunately, no one's challenging that one. Kearney will get hold of it. Looking for long ball, forward to Peel. It will go towards Peel. I wonder if we'll see any more... Luke Kenny uh, hijinks at 3-2 down. I'd be surprised. I would be surprised at 3-2 down, maybe at 3-3 three, three or 4-3 up. Good win from Debenham. Finds Preen. And I now. Wide for Brody Gray to, to search for a pass. It's a missed kick from Matthews. And Spalding. And with Campbell and Gosling off, it's up to a Spalding and a Debenham. And now a Luke Preen to take control of this RAF attack. Ball wide for Dawson, making him stretch. And Bright. Dawson will go on an overlap. Until Bright comes inside, Preen will challenge. Well defended, though, from Thompson. Minimal options around him. Strong tackling as well. I think it's Matty Evans, sorry, not Thompson. I think Pe Peel's feeling the effect of, you know, working up there on his own a lot. He's tired. Probably a bit, a bit deflated, you know, he's not getting the support. Hasn't hasn't been on the ball as much as he'd like. No. In this game. The you know, and with the RAF playing it around the back, you know, he's gonna have to work hard, he's gonna have to press high. And he will do it, no doubt about it, he will do it, but when he gets to mindset, you have to you have to wonder if he gets a little bit too frustrating at times. Mm. Rawlins will go back to Christian Paul at Brig. Let's test that injury, shall we? That's a good kick. And Spalding. Oh. Well, we talk about impact in inter-services matches. There's no physical contact there, I will say that much. But sometimes the ball is the weapon. And absolute zero compassion from the Air Force. <laughs> As if you expected anything no, different. Absolutely not. The throw will be pulled back as uh, Dawson t took it from a little bit too far. Which uh, Dawson's like, oh, okay, no problem, I'll take yep. some time. No Buys problem. him some time, doesn't it? Quite cute. He'll be looking for Spalding. 
Alfie, Alfie Molden, big physical challenge. And it's played forward towards Peel. He's got Sam Rawlins tight, and he's going to try and roll him. And I tell you what, that was a call for a penalty. The Navy referee says not to be, and I don't think it was, you know. I think it was just a bit of a tangle of legs. It was clumsy. Some refs might have given it, but our referee this evening said no. Without being biased from our referee, I don't, I don't think that's, do you know, worthy of a penalty. That's good play from Peel. Turner. One more for Bryant. He looks to come inside and he's cut out, but the Army will still have it. Bryant on towards Thompson, who has got an eye for goal. Wide to Greenway. Good play to get Bryant into the penalty area. Options. It's That's going to be a goal, goal kick. kick. The frustration for the Army, the frustration around this stadium, just starting to build with every missed opportunity or decision that goes against them in their brain. Back to that potential penalty. Yeah. Like you say, it, it was clumsy, but I don't think there was enough contact. Yeah, I think do you, we talk about normal football contact it, and, and do you know, I think that the ball's bouncing, Peel's watching it, he's watching it. What are the the actions of the defender? And I, I don't think that's enough for a foul, to be completely honest. Paul at Brig with the goal kick then. Alfie Molding has what a few headers he's coming on. And it's getting a little bit physical. That's a late tackle from Thompson. I think he slipped. Give yeah, all credit to him. It appears as though the RF are trying to get him sent off there. They know he's on a yellow card. I don't think there was any malice in that one. I think there was a slip from Thompson that threw him into that position. I think he's hurt himself more than anything. But yeah, like you say, he's on a yellow card. Yeah. I think he probably thought about that as he, uh, he looked as though he pulled out, to be honest, which has probably been the reason why he slipped. I think if he's not on a yellow card, he's going through there. One of the most experienced players in the team, actually, Sean Thompson for the Army, and that's the type of decision-making that you see there, um, because maybe Sean Thompson, when he first comes into the Army team, even on the yellow card, goes through there. <laughs> yeah. But as you get older... As you get more experience, decisions are better on the football pitch, you, is what they say anyway, who knows. If you are watching then into the final, what, 13 minutes, 12 minutes? Yeah, 12 um, minutes of normal time. If you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, please do let us know where you're watching, who you're supporting, what's been your favourite moment of the game so far? I'm sure your uh, service al alignment will not do any, have anything to say with that matter, right? Dawson over the free kick. Looking for Preen to put himself about there. Headed down by Malden and cleared by Stevenson. And Luke Preen, look at him go, he's really chasing it down. Two of the brightest young talents in the British military there doing battle. Oh, he's done really well there as Alfred Malden. Two men who I suspect may be teammates for UCAF before much longer, but their uh, opponents on the pitch tonight and they did both, both did very well there. Good win in the middle from Jordan, but he couldn't keep control of it. Fagan. Good, he's got options over to the right. Thompson's gone the opposite way. Back to... Oh, full for Peel. Peel looked for the, for the layoff, actually. And now wide from Gray. And the, 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 neither side can really get hold of the ball at the moment and keep hold of it. I do wonder if a lot of that is a certain Jake Gosling going off, for example, where the RAF can't quite get hold of it at the moment. That's a good ball from Debenham, though. And uh, Preen has done well. And Preen's into the penalty area. Really great, great play from Matthews. Matthews. He knows he can't put a foot wrong there. He knows that one missed step and it would have been a penalty. But he did very well. Here's Jordan. Henry Jordan spinning and turning. Space for Dawson into Spalding, plays it wide for Bright. Good play from the RAF. And Bright looks back for Spalding on his left foot. Joe Spalding. Great save, Luke Kearney. With the legs, Kearney keeps it out. The army survive for now. Julia McCormick says, keep it up. Brody Gray watching from Portugal. Leslie Cutting is watching from Cyprus. Jack Debnam's mother-in-law. Dawson 
There's one for Bright to chase, and actually it weren't, weren't a bad option, but Bright just wasn't quite aware and ready for it. As it stands, the champions will go into the final game looking to retain their trophy. A win here really does set them up strong going into that clash with the Navy in Shrewsbury. A flick on from Spalding and Preen's onto it. Preen's got the pace over a Stevenson, but the flag is up. And I did wonder for a second, and the referee and the linesman get it right. Sam it's Atkinson. a hard one to judge with impact and then delaying the flag, and it frustrates everybody around, but sadly, that's what we've got to do. Sam Atkinson says, big 10 minutes, come on, the Army boys. Sam Atkinson, a player that... I was surprised not to see in the squad this, this year. I believe I there are left, injuries involved. I think he's left the army. Sam may uh, confirm that for us. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think he's left now. Sam Atkinson and uh, Joe McC uh, McCarthy, who were, who were big, big players for the army in a 3-0 win over the Navy last year. McCarthy got two. So Scott McCarthy got two goals uh, last year against the Navy. Not involved in the squad this year, but I do believe injuries are part of that. Shane Mitchell is pointing out uh, Sam, Sam Dawson's distribution in the second half. He has been very good, actually, on the ball, Sam Dawson. And now the Army have got a bit of pressure on here. Just That's a searching ball. Towards He's Greenway. in. Oh! Paul at Brigg has lost it. Oh! And somehow it didn't drop in. I think it came off an RAF boot. It will be a corner. Talk about living on the edge. What is it with late goals in this game, Kyle? I think we're in for a five minutes here. I, t I tell you, a big ten minutes. That could have gone anyways. Up towards Greenway, he's got some some uh, height as well, by the way. Paul at Brig just completely lost it in the, the light, maybe. I'm not sure. Corner in. It's a good delivery. Very he's good up. delivery, and it's over. Somehow, somehow Matthews has headed it over. That was inches. You can't can't complain at the tactic because the tactic is bang on. Look for the big man in these corners, and it potentially should have been. We've got another Air Force substitution. Goal. We've got Joe Spalding coming off for uh, Josh Randall by the looks of it. That's right, Josh Randall. Josh Randall's a really interesting one. He is an attacking player. He's, his bread and butter is, is a tricky left-footed winger who likes to take a man on and curl one in from 25 yards if he has his way. For the under-23s, he played left-back last month. So he's certainly someone who can play different positions too. Dawson looking to win the header. Drops for Jordan, who will look for Randall, looking to get involved straight away. And we talk about wants to take a man on, take a second man on. Kind of threw himself to the floor, to be honest. No foul. Thomas puts his foot through it. Good win from Molden. And uh, Luke Kearney. <laughs> but look to distribute quickly, I'd imagine. Ten into the final sort of nine minutes here, I believe. And the army are looking for a goal. We've got an ex RAF medic watching from Belfast on YouTube. Someone watching from Elgin as well. Yeah, the army trying to get forward. We've got some good coverage tonight, Carl, for sure. Absolutely. We've got lots of people watching in lots of different places, just how we like it. There's Lee Phillips with the throw. Just uh, strain a little too far. I can see Owen James is warming up. He's stripped off. He's ready. The kitchen sink is about Here to come on. Here he goes on. for the last 10. I'd imagine Greg Peel, who's run himself into the ground in a lot of ways with the work he's had to do off the ball that like you mentioned, might be the man to come off. Flicked on really well, actually, by Preen, who I think took a, took a little knock. I don't think Molding meant any malice by it, but these things happen in the air sometimes. Seems to be OK. And uh, now's the time. For Owen James, it is Greg Peel who comes off. He's, now. Put, he's putting a good shift as Peel, you know. He's granted he hasn't got on the score sheet, but he's, he's worked hard up there, you know. Tireless running, he's done the hard work off the ball, you know, which allowed you know to potentially force some mistakes in the first half. Well, Owen James is a man who's risen through the ranks rather quickly, let's say. Made his debut for the under 23s last year, didn't make a senior appearance. 
six months later or so, he's leading the line for UCAF in France at a Kentish Cup, and that is the top, top level of military football. So there is certainly something that a lot of people see in Owen James. Are we going to see it in the final few minutes for the Army? That's a good ball wide, though, for the RAF. And can Phil Bright get a ball in here? He can. Deflected off Molden, but it will drop. And the keeper's not going anywhere near it, Kenny. Goal. And he's oh, in the post, and oh, it's over. And top. that, that was the RAF's win ready to take. Wow. I think it was Henry Jordan who put it over the crossbar, and I think it was uh, Luke Preen who hit the post. Two men looking to make an impact, and that would have been some impact. I think Josh Rand also had some impact from Luke Kearney, but he seems to be getting to his feet. What a chance for the RAF. Oh, I think that was it. That was the stamp in the corner. We've got girls from Australia watching Brodie Gray at the moment. Just Brodie Gray, I think. We'll get some close-ups later. And Brody Gray there with the, the missed clearance, as, as does Bright. Maybe that might be a confidence boost, though, for the Army. Phil Bright threw himself in there. Physical, but the referee says no foul. Bright looking towards the back post. Had to be headed away from Matthews there because Debenham was coming onto it. And now the Army come forward. Roars of get forward from the older shot crowd. Given away when it was looking towards uh, Greenway. Maybe that's the confidence, though, for the army. You see, um, you see it. What was an open goal for Henry Jordan? Mm -hmm. You see that go over the bar, and you think maybe, just maybe, we can get something here. They need to capitalise on it because the time's running out. Then you know, I think they've got three minutes of normal time left, plus whatever's added on, and you know, they've only had pff, one, two standout chances in the second half. I see Scott Hind is watching on YouTube. Uh, no longer playing for the army of course but was a goal scorer last year from the uh, from a corner in Shrewsbury so Scott Hind thank you for watching I'm sure you'd love to see an army goal but we're not seeing it at the moment that'll go behind for a goal kick and time is running out now you just question but but we said that at the end of the first half we looked like we said the army was strong you know they were organized and then all of a sudden we had two goals in injury time yeah and I'm just saying I've heard rumours today that Luke Kearney is a good striker. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. There's no secret in that. I think he tells everyone enough. Paul at Brig with the long clearance then towards Dawson. Dawson wins it, flicks it on. And Bright couldn't clear it, actually. It might just fall for James not to be. Thomas gets rid of it. The army will quickly move this back into play. Tom Thompson's chest control was strong. The RAF come away. The Henry Jordan Thompson actually did a pass. Just looks like he's offside. Just too late. He played the pass just a, a ten seconds, well, two seconds Tenth too late. Second, ten yeah, seconds yeah. Yeah. And Preen would have been in. I don't think we'd see Luke move that fast if <laughs> the army with three two up. <laughs> he's a cracker, isn't he? Well, Kenny's going to look for the box. He's going to look for Matthews, you would think. Matthews Great, flicks it on. Played away, and the RAF will break with Preen. Yeah, and Preen's got pace. He's got Debnam. He's gone Debenham's the opposite neck through way. The, through the middle. Randall will keep it in. Randall will look for the box. Look at Debnam at the back post. Well, communication might have helped him there. And Kearney... Gets it underway. I I, even the army aren't ready for him to get get underway that quick. <laughs> Clearance charged down from Maldin. Preen did well. We are hitting towards injury time. We're keeping an eye on the board. The board's about to go up. Actually, it's a good time in. And there will be six minutes of injury time. So. The army can't say they don't have time to get back into this. They've got to throw everything at it, Kyle. Let's see what they've got. There have been a few um, stoppages, fouls, gold celebrations as well, for the RAF at least. So six minutes. Kearney will look once again towards Matthews. And Matthews will flick it on. It will fall for Jordan to clear, though. Sorry, it will call for Dawson to clear. He took the RAF are asking for everything now. Yeah. 
Rene Jordan trying to loop Kearney there, but didn't quite work. And now Kearney up towards Owen James, who's no slouch in the height department himself. Hyatt can bring it away. Misplaced pass, though. Scrappy. It's just the end product, isn't it? They're just looking for that end product. Jamie Turner, last minute equaliser, says Scott Hind. Also, great flick on. Brody Gray does well, though. Paul at Brig gets rid of it for now. It's going to keep coming back, though, because the army are desperate to get this goal. Debnam did enough, but it will be a throw for the army. Taylor Dixon's going for a 3 3 on YouTube. I think every army supporter watching in the stadium, on YouTube, on Facebook, even if you're watching on BFBS TV, we'll be saying 3-3. The RAF, they're ready for this to end now, and they'll take their three points back to Shrewsbury for that final game against the Navy. It's not over yet, though. With all eyes on next week at Portsmouth Fratton Park. And Ken, he's turned into playmaker, <laughs> ball-playing defender, I think. And again, he's going to get it back. He's got to look long now. He's got to look long. He doesn't. He goes to Alfie Moulding. I, I suspect he's coming back. Here's Thompson. Thompson's pass will find the left back, Clay Bryant. And now Turner. That's a great Smart ball. Smart ball. Stevenson's up from the back. Oh. It'll be a corner. Will we see Luke Kearney? He's been given the nod to go forward. I think we've hit the point that the kitchen sink's happening. Kearney's coming. You've got You've got, Math you've got Matthews up there, you've got Stevenson up there, you've got every, well, you've got 10 army players in the box, it feels like. Good ball in, it's just dropped down and... Here he is. Luke Kearney, surely not. Surely not. <laughs> Luke Kearney. Oh, the writing was on the wall. It'll stay in for Matthews, by the way. And it's hit the side net in. If Luke Kearney <laughs> scores there... I think we'd have dropped the mic and walked on and celebrated with him ourselves. But the drop of the shoulder, outside with the left foot, and then strikes on goal. He needs, a, he needs a number nine shirt for the next game. He's still up there, by the way. He's actually in the box now for this corner. Here we go again. Towards the near post, headed away by Ayat. Preen knocks it on. Back in back from in. a red shirt. He will drop, actually, for Stevenson, potentially... Still there, and the army want a penalty. The referee is not interested in that. The army are furious, but I mean, I'm not sure I saw enough for a penalty from our position. No, it looks like the keeper come in and, and won the ball with a. Granted, it's a long way from us, but it looked like he won the ball with a clean punch. Might show something different from the other side, but it it looked clean to us. I mean, to be fair to the army, pressure's on. Last minute, they're going to want anything. So I understand the uh, appeal, yeah. let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no penalty. And uh, Luke Kenny's in his own half, so I think we're all safe. And the, the ball's nowhere to be seen, should we act surprised? <laughs> yeah, the RAF are uh, hurriedly pushing all balls behind any, any benches. Paula Briggs having to go and get it. <laughs> He's jogging, to be fair to him. Eventually. <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed a cracking night of inter-services football. Will we get a, a climactic finale while we've got a dead moment? We, do, we don't use it often, but player of the match. Uh, for me, it's got to be Mike Campbell. He's the difference, you know, two goals. Uh, captain, you know, in, in what you couldn't see on the camera, he was rallying the troops, you know, to say, look, just calm down, relax, let's play our game, play our game. Um, you know, but a close runner-up for me, you know, if, if he hadn't been subbed off was Lewis Simmons, I was really impressed with him. It's the first time I've seen him in inter services football in Army colours. Um, granted, I don't watch that much Army football, but I was really impressed with him. Randall um, goes for goal. No, it was a cross, sorry. So my uh, play of the match is uh, Mike Campbell. Bright in the corner, and I think he's going to stay there. Time is ticking. The RAF are so, so close to finding the three points to be theirs. 
and it would be a huge three points. Winning that first game in the inter-services sets you up so well. The RAF is so close. It might fall for Ayat here. Good slide tackle. Debnam's there towards Bright. He will go for a throw. The Army need to get this going and get it going quick. On towards Stevenson. Flicked on. Stevenson will win chance. it. And Greenway is sprinting forward. Stevenson trying to get in the box for him. Not many options for Greenway. He's found one. It's deflected. It might fall. Great save. It was Turner who took the shot. Great block, sorry. The Army throwing everything at this. They oh. need a goal. And that pass isn't going to do it. They haven't got long left. All eyes on the official at this point, I think. There can't be much longer. Will the Army get one last chance? Luke Kearney's shaping up for a cross in, you'd think, but we've gone the opposite side. And actually, Pre might get to that. Oh. Alfie Moulding's onto it quick. Good double slide challenge. Handball by Alfie Moulding. And the RAF cheered that as if that was a goal themselves. They think they're there. Andy Cookter says, you know where this needs to go. Right into the corner. And I would imagine that might be that for the army. Dawson sends it towards Breen. Molden wins the header. It's got to stay in it if it can for the army. It does. Referee looks at his watch. We're still playing. Kenny's on the ball. <laughs> oh, it's a poor, poor move inside. Kenny's on the ball. Referee. Another look at the watch. We're all looking. Long. This is it. Kenny up towards James. Headed away brilliantly by Rawlins. You just wanted to see this urgency 10 minutes ago, Kyle, didn't you? Another look at his watch from the referee. Molding. It wasn't the greatest ball, but it's flicked through. Rawlings with another big header for the RAF, and that is it. Well, uh, what, what a game. <laughs> what an incredible comeback from the RAF, it must be said. 2-0 down, going into injury time at the first half, and at the end of the game, they've won the game 3-2. That is what it takes to be into services champions, and on this performance and on this evidence, the Navy are going to have a hell of a time stopping them in Shrewsbury. Yeah, but it's tight. You know, it's one goal. It's all to play for. You know, there's not a massive margin. They've had to work hard tonight. You know, will they look at the likes of Mike Campbell going off? Is that an opportunity? Jake Goslin, are they carrying something? You know, they've had to take precautionary measures because you want them on the field for 90 minutes. And, and, and tonight they haven't been afforded that opportunity and they've had to grind that out. And that is why each game is important. You say about goal difference next week. The Army go down to Portsmouth having to win. Mm. The Navy go down thinking, well, we have to win as well. It's going to be a big, big game at Fratton Park. You can uh, buy tickets for that. Helen Richardson's remind us you can buy tickets for that if you want to. Or if you can't get there, you can watch live with us. We'll be live on the Forces News YouTube channel um, down in Portsmouth. We've also got the women's game on the Tuesday and haven't that set up in a similar way to this. Both sides, Army and Navy, needed a victory. This should be just the, the start of a very memorable inter-services championships I believe we are just preparing for an interview with uh, RAF captain Mike Campbell the, the, the match winner uh, he will be with J Julian Evans in just a moment I, was, I mean I said to you earlier he's desperate to score match winner two goals he loves it here yeah yeah got a hat trick two years ago got two tonight Mike Campbell he's Experience and his his involvement here cannot be cannot be understated. Uh, Mike Campbell, I believe, ultimately is, is the difference. With Julian Evans. Yeah. Well, look, I'm delighted to say we've got the winning skipper, Michael Campbell. You love scoring against the army. What is the magic? What is the hold that you have over your opposition tonight? I don't know if it's a hold. It's just. I pride myself on being able to get myself into good positions. Um, the quality that we've got on this side, there's always going to be deliveries into the box. Um, we work on it a lot. We work on getting the balls wide, getting them in the box or through the 10, wherever that is. Um, it's just about being in the right position. Um, and fortunately, it was twice tonight. 2 0 down. What were you saying to your teammates there? Because it's easy to, to fold, to give up uh, and not fight for it. Calm down. 
Um, I think we let the occasion get them better of us for the first probably 35 minutes. The army were really good, to be fair to them. Um, it was similar last year. We were really slow against the Navy in the first inter service game. I think you work all year, then it comes down to two fixtures. So I think the occasion got the better of us, but we settled. And once we settled, I think realistically we looked like we were creating the better chances and obviously the army had the flurry at the end but that's to be expected well, you've got your captain's duties you've got to go and lift a trophy but that's not the trophy that you want the big one is to come against the royal navy so what will you say now it's only half time in terms of, of the tournament from your point of view yeah i mean we've given ourselves a cup final now haven't we um obviously the lads will be watching the navy game against the army next week depending on that result we know what we need to do but i mean we go out every game to trying to win it doesn't really matter what happens next week but it gives us an opportunity, it's nice going last because we get to have a look at the Navy, see what they're about. Um, so yeah, the message stays the same. Um, play how we play and look for the win. Congratulations, enjoy Thank your you evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Mike Campbell, I'm sure, is very, very pleased with his two goals and the RAF win. We're going to see the Constantinople Trophy lifted. There is a name for every trophy. It could also be called the Carrington Cup. <laughs> I believe it's got two names. First of all, officials who have put in a very good performance. I, I, I thought they've done really well tonight, Carl. You know, they might argue about one or two here and there, but I thought he tried to let the game flow. You know, he added value to it. Um, I think Dave will look back upon this when he watches back and think, Do you know what, I've delivered that into services. Nobody's talking about him. You know, you could argue potentially it was a, a soft shout for a penalty half half-hearted I'd say but the main thing he let it flow he added value played an advantage for a goal and you know he dealt with it he got on it early there was two early yellow cards which set the stone that he wasn't going to be challenged or compromised or phased from making a big decision so I think Dave led the team well and, and he looked back happy tough physical game and he stamped his authority really well yeah agreed yeah time then for Mike Campbell to pick up the first of what he hopes will be three trophies this this month Michael Campbell, two goals tonight, the match winner. I hope you'll enjoy this, you should enjoy this. Constantinople Trophy is the RAFs. Will the Inter Services be the RAFs again? They're looking for a treble. And we will follow the action every moment. Next week, Army go to the Navy. The following week, the Navy go to the RAF three games that are going to be huge for the future of forces football we've seen one heck of a game tonight do not miss any of it that's coming up also inserted netball i should say are happening inserted netball this week we've got two big games tomorrow afternoon and friday afternoon so the inter-services trophy will be decided in the netball too and then uh, we will down in haven't on tuesday for the army navy women's match Fratton Park on Wednesday for the Army Navy men's match. It is BFBS Sport, the place where you see all of this in services sport. Hope you enjoyed yourself, Scott. Absolutely. Always enjoy it. It's great to get behind the mic and you know, have a night off from, from the stress of being on the green stuff. And uh, thanks to BFBS for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Well, we've enjoyed having you. We've enjoyed having a, a brilliant game. We hope you guys have all enjoyed it. Make sure you join us again. Netball tomorrow, 3 p.m. on the Force News YouTube channel. Do not miss it. See you guys later. Bye. It's the ultimate team sport. It's fast, fun, and we're fitter than the lads. It's dynamic, it's fast paced.